And now, it's time for the Freedom Fiends Agenda live call-in show. Have you swallowed too much of the state's poison? The Freedom Fiends will stick their fingers down your throat and hold your hair back while you hurl. Call in before they get droned. Live right now on Adam Curry's No Agenda Global Radio. Chat room. Okay. Okay. Um, All right. In the morning. Uh, no, don't type there. Yeah. Oh, here you go. Why don't they fucking... Oh, sorry. Why don't they actually have it outlined with some kind of color that's not white? So you know where you're typing. Hey, that's the least of our uh, concerns right now. <laughs> I would say. All right, it's another uh, no agenda, global radio, freedom fiends agenda, uh, where no one can hear us. Nima, can anybody hear me? I yeah. don't know. I'm asking them in the chat room now. Manimal. Yeah, it's ki- yeah. it's kind of hard to do a show intro. You're always like, hey, yeah, it's the freedom fiends, and no but, one hears uh, us. Yeah, no one hears you. Uh, <laughs> Manimal says stay here So maybe we are stay here Stay here Name it NMWD Stay here Manimal. I'm here Volume can, is super oh, low Volume is okay. super can I can solve here, that problem here, Yeah Alright let me turn it up uh, Like yeah, 8 dB yay. Okay 8 dB is twice as loud So yes uh, are you, you turning up the butt sliders Yeah I'm turning up the butt <laughs> sliders <laughs> That you got from White the Castle butt. The uh, program we right. use to broadcast Is called Butt B-U-T-T broadcast. I think I think we should stop explaining that. It's well, funnier if we don't explain it. <laughs> louder would help. They say louder like, would help. Why are they talking really? about butts all the time? Because that's our kind okay. of show. It's all the right. it's the freedom butt agenda. The freedom butt agenda. Yeah. yeah. You know you like it like yeah. that. Okay. So now you guys can hear us, right? You hear the show. Huzzah! Somebody pressed the button. One of the yes. web gnomes in Alec chained up in Adam Pat Curry's Max. basement. Pressed one of the buttons. Is it still low? Move them Pat, butt Pat, sliders. Pat Max has uh has huzzahed us. So no, six decibels is twice. So are they saying they want it louder? Uh they want it louder. Yeah, it looks pretty look pretty quiet. All right, let me turn this up. All right, we mm-hmm. are on the mm-hmm. edge of the red now. The edge Butt of the sliders. red, mummy. Yes, yummy. Yes. Now Damn. you got manimal excited. Well, that is oh. the goal of this show is to get manimal yes. excited. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So butts and cunt hairs. <laughs> butts and cunt hairs. So <laughs> yeah. I don't, know. I don't know. I guess we. All right. Just... Well, they can hear us. They can hear us. So yeah. Uh, let's just go on with the show. And if we're too quiet, um. You know, yeah. we'll try again later or uh, something. Six decibels is twice the volume, not three. Oh, know, quit getting in your silly little math fight. Who needs math it? Math fight. My Talk math about things. Math. Talk about words, not my numbers. My math can beat up your numbers. <laughs> Manimal uh, says too loud. Void too Zero loud. says too much red. Oh, too dear. Red. Okay. Oh, it hurts ears. Okay. Oh, no. Down. Oh, no. All right. Uh, quiet. Quiet, quiet, quiet. T, 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 E, X, 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 A, S. Uh, yeah, so... um. Do we have a show yet? Everybody listening to the show? Everyone, it's going to be a really good All right. show. All right. We should start telling people that the show starts at 2.35, because it usually <laughs> takes about five minutes for us to work out the kinks. Okay, now they say, you crackling fiends. Quit oh, blowing me. Crackling. Man, this is like really uh, feisty and sensual. Uh, That's kind of cool, though. Man yeah. pile today. Man pile. Yeah. <laughs> In the chat room. Manimal yes. pile. Yes. It's a burger carnival. Oh, sorry. I got that wrong. A sausage fest. Yeah. 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 So. Mm. 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 Her, her, her. Sausage. Quit blowing me. Hit, hit it. it. Someone said hit uh, it. Much, hit it. Much beta. beta. All right. Much beta. I'm going to say that. Okay. Beta. <laughs> I thought this was well, much speak, beta. Speaking of beta, you're using I beta. I am using a new mic today. Okay. I'm going to do. Now that y'all can hear and the sound stuff's worked out, I'm going to show you a. Uh, Two different mics. Tell me what you think. Okay, this is microphone A, the one I've been talking on. This is, yeah, okay. Microphone A. This is microphone A. This is microphone A. This is, this is microphone B. This is microphone B. Speaking into microphone B. Microphone B. Microphone A. This is microphone A. Microphone yeah. A. Microphone B. Microphone B. Mm. Microphone B is the same mic that Nima's using that I was using on the other class. It's a $16 mm-hmm. natty $70 natty uh, dynamic mic. And the yeah. mic I'm using now is a $130 Sure Beta SM50, uh, uh, Beta 57A, which is yeah. Uh, yeah. 
it's supposed to be one of the best, you know, mics under a lot of money. Well, it's supposed to be one of the best bikes for uh, speaking and singing and right. bod- bodcasting. It is indeed uh, suave. You shouldn't have called it microphone A and B. It's microphone A. Well, I didn't so want to cool. influence their decisions. You know. Ah, uh, yeah. Blind taste test, etc. Yeah. Blind ear hole ingestion test, of course. Is, is that a picture of Richard Stallman passed out somewhere with a basketball under his belly, or is that really what he looks like? That's Richard Stallman, isn't it? Did you see it? I think it's Richard Stallman. Is he at an airport? Where is that? Or I think it's a web. Study uh, lounge at a university or something? Yeah, probably. He works at a university. He's a tax uh, eater. Uh, <laughs> He's a tax eater. Yeah. He looks yeah. like a bum, though, doesn't he? Doesn't he? Yeah. He's, he's got well, what's what's in the, the paper bag? Uh, I don't know. Someone just commented on podcasting. I think there's like a seven minute. Um, I think there's a long, a longer. Uh, 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 the delay, offer. yeah. yeah. I, it's it's probably about a minute or so. So, I did uh, a I did a blog stalks. post called Ron Paul comes out as an anarchist. Yay! Yeah, Yay. He isn't did. it great to say I told you so? He did, yeah, yeah. You and I, have been saying especially for, for something like, good like that, it sucks to say I told you so. For hey, the world ended, or hey, fiscal collapse, or that's hey, not they a took fun. All I told our guns you so. Away. Or they took yeah, all our guns yeah. away. Yeah, but um, uh, hey, Ron Paul's an anarchist. That's a great. I told you so. Yeah. He didn't use uh, those words, but uh, yeah. <laughs> look at this picture. It's it's someone slapping Stall- Stallman slapping someone for uh, saying Linux instead of GNU plus Linux. <laughs> All right, yeah, we got a show yeah. to do. That was our tech talk to uh, stimulate you boys, and now we're gonna get on with it. That was, that was our stimulus package. Yeah, I'm not even. Gonna, I'm not even in the chat room anymore. I'm in my chat room with Nima. Yeah, it's yeah. really weird. We're our in different. Room. We're in different states. He's in Texas. I'm. In, uh, he's in Austin, Texas. I'm in uh, Wyoming in my windowless mm-hmm. bunker in an unnamed. Mm-hmm. Well, it's actually outside of Casper, but it's you know dug into the ground so it's weird yeah. though because i feel like we're in the same house sometimes like today we're supposed to be on at a certain time to test mics and and uh i was in the kitchen and i was like oh it's past the time and i yelled everything was set up and i yelled i'll be did right did you there, yell to me Nima. did you yell yeah. Nima? <laughs> i felt like i was you know in the other room for uh-huh, you. Uh-huh. you didn't hear it but uh, i was talking no, to myself no no well sometimes we leave the mics on you know when we take a break and i'm like hey be right back and i just run out you know get a beer or whatever it really is kind of like being housemates or something but yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a light. Oh, here's a light. I guess I can smoke now in front of this mic because I've decided to keep it. I wasn't going to smoke because I was like, uh, mm. maybe I'll have to return it, but because mm, mm. it'll smell like smoke. Yes. Uh, and since you've decided to keep it, you can now give it a name. Uh, I don't give like, it a name, but like I can when now. You decide to keep a baby. I can now throw away all the shit that came with it and say, I'll never need this again. What? Ugh. You do that? I don't do that. Always. I keep, I you keep don't all even- paraphernalia for all gear. You don't delete emails. I have gear. I don't delete I have, emails. Yeah, I ever. have gas. Gear acquisition <laughs> syndrome, not pass. I don't have packaging acquisition syndrome. <laughs> well, I, you- I, I, I store my mics in the box they came in when I'm not using them so that they're nice and safe and I cuddled. I just, I just have them on a mic stand and uh, put a sock over them. Or now I just use windscreens and just buy cheap ones and just throw them away as they're going. Yeah. You know, they're like well, you know, you know what? The mic that I didn't do that to was the condenser mic. And look what happened to that. I know. It died and then I smashed its carcass. I think we need so, to put a picture of that in the... Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so... so. Yeah. Well, you know, you said you also said that you don't um, you don't smoke in your house, but you did for five years in the house you lived in before before you got married and mm. moved into a nicer place where you can't smoke. No, probably two years because previous to that, I was living with non-smokers. Dude, and- two years of smoking and living the way you did will kill any mic. Mm. And living mm. the way you did, <laughs> living the way I did. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't. I also don't like to keep the mics on the stand because. Dog For some reason, them. well, it's the cats, man. I don't think the dog could reach the mic, although the dog is horrible and did horrible things this week. But um, the cats, man, because the closet is sort of forbidden to them, uh, they wait outside of it for any opening and then zoom into <laughs> into the closet, which is also doubles as my office. So it, they're obsessed with it because it's the forbidden fruit. And they'll jump up and get their kitty feet paws all over my gear. Kittyfeet.com. Um, kitty feet. And, 
And I've got like a hula girl on top of this thing, and I'm just worried they're going to knock the hula girl over, and she's going to smash a mic fo- or, or a computer or something like that because they knocked her over. And uh, people are saying in the people are saying in the chat room, this show just got a thousand times better. So I guess on the Curry Cast, we just uh, talk about gear and Linux instead of uh, how the government <laughs> instead of freedom your guns. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go, there you go. Ugh, yeah. Uh, but my dog, um, uh, so, so yeah, I don't think he could reach the mic, yeah. but, uh, what he did this weekend is we've been trying to leave him out of his bear cage because we've had literally a bear cage built for him made out of steel that our, um, our handy cousin built, you know, out of, uh, steel and, and a handy? welding machine. Is that a nice way of saying, like, rides the short bus? <laughs> no, no, he's, 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 he good runs his own hands. business, basically. Good with yeah. the sands. Yeah, good at building things. Yeah. Uh, he built yeah. it on the cheap as a wedding present because uh, the wife was worried about the dog tearing everything up. Because you saw him. When he, when you leave the dog alone, he tears. Sh- he, he doesn't tear shit up out of spite, but he tries very, very hard to escape. Uh, yeah, I like, watched him for three days. It was hell, man. He destroyed <laughs> your house. He did, yeah. He literally I mean, he dug, dug through. Into, like, he dug through the wall down to like the lath underneath the... Mm-hmm. Uh, Good. But not not just dr- drywall, but whatever that stuff is. I guess they call it hardtack. That's like a, hard a tack, cement back composite back. almost. Yeah, he I'll tortured that too. Tack, back tack and a and a nickel's worth fat of tack, opium. Fat back. Yeah. Um. So yeah, so we we were putting him in a cage. It worked fine when we were in Washington. You know, uh, two years. Um. But lately, though, he's bucked at the cage so much, even though he's only in it like two hours a week because most people – there's somebody home most of the time now since we have three people in the house, uh, one person employed outside of the home uh, currently. And he bites the steel bars and tries to rip them off. And since they're steel, his teeth uh, break. So he has no top canines anymore. They're completely ripped off. Um, and so we decided, oh, we've got to do something else. So we've been trying to train him to stay at home and not in the cage. And it was going really well, like no problems at all for like a month. Um, and then the other day, we go to the grocery store for literally 30 minutes uh, just to get food for dinner. You know, I got some carne asada. The wife got a pizza. Come back, try to open the door, realize it won't open, even though I turned the key in. He locked the deadbolt. The no. deadbolt. The one the one that doesn't have Dude, a keyhole. The yeah. dog is gonna kill you. He was pawing at uh, I guess he must have been pawing at the door so hard that uh you know He's, when the deadbolt's not right, locked it's, it's right. horizontal, he, he he flipped it to where it was vertical and, and basically locked us out of our apartment. <laughs> it was completely <laughs> awful. I was so mad at him. I had um, one cat back in the day my roommate had a cat that could open a door, like not a you know, like like a door in the house that wasn't hard to turn. She'd jump up and she would like know what she was doing and twist really? the knob. It was kind of creepy because one night I was tripping yeah. and I was convinced my roommate wanted to kill me because he said he wanted to kill me. And uh, I hid all the knives, not just from him, but from the cat. <laughs> well, I don't know. I'd be I'd be much more impressed with a cat holding a knife uh, and being able to stab someone than a, a cat yeah. opening a door. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, ah, Logan says a rubber dog hutch um, that might last a day or two. Uh, <laughs> no, you have like I got a him. bondage cage, don't you, for your dog? Like, he, he's made yeah. for people or something, and you use it for the dog. <laughs> well, it's big enough for people. Uh, it's big. He's a big dog, so uh, yeah, the cage is like my height or a little bit shorter, maybe five feet. Um, anyway, I just yeah. retired the old mic, put it in the drawer. Padded gonna, room. That that would be good. Yeah, I'm not going to shoot it. But, okay, so let's talk about Ron Paul. Wait, 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 and which secession. mic? Hold on. Before we do that, which mic are you retiring? The, the, one, you're, the one you're using. The oh, Nady. Oh, okay. It's just okay. in a drawer. It's not it's all, like. Yeah, I'm it's been gonna, around. I was going to say it's been around for a month. I'm not going to shoot it. It's a short career. <laughs> well, I got a good blog post out of it and actually made more than $17 from people ordering them from my Amazon uh, affiliate link. So uh, it paid for itself. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So let's see. Has anyone mentioned. Uh, nobody said anything. I mean, Mick sounds good to me. Okay, Johnny, nobody All says. Right. All right, thanks, okay. Johnny. Thank you. So, uh, let's talk about Ron Paul and secession, or you still want to talk about dogs and cats? Uh, no, I'm I'm totally down for secession. Uh, or talking about it. Uh, I I I'm down for more than secession. I wrote a blog post about that. Um, I but know that's we'll just get, having we'll a smaller there. master. But uh, yeah, I, I saw your blog post. I'll link it. 
uh, no, I'll link it. I'll link it. You know what? I don't want to link articles on here because then people would be re- trying to read that instead It'll of be uh, read, reading them while they hear them. Yeah, yeah. we'll just talk about it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, got the so writer on. Ron, here Ron Paul gave a speech in Congress that uh, pretty much confirms something you and I've been hinting at for a year and a half. That when he finished, not hinting at, we've been saying it saying, explicitly. Yeah, we've been saying yeah. two things he said confirmed things we said. One was we we've been saying that. People say he's not effective. I mean, he's gotten one bill passed out of 603 or something. So, but we think he's been very, and a lot of people, critics point to that and say, well, he's not an effective politician. Exactly. You know, (laughs) Uh, but we say he's very effective because he's turned about 10 million people onto the idea of liberty and they're all going to turn 10 million people on until it's, you know, 258 million Americans who want liberty and, you know, 48 million who want to tax everyone else and then things will get really interesting Mm -hmm, who mm -hmm. want to steal and be given crap. So uh, the other thing, and he said like, you know, a lot of people say I'm not a success. I haven't uh, passed many bills. I passed one bill. Uh, I haven't had any bridges or highways named after me. (laughs) Thank God. (laughs) Thank God. Who would take care of the roads? Um, (laughs) You know, then he went to like, enumerate what's wrong with America and why it's basically killing itself. You know, the doctor pronounced it dead, basically. <laughs> um, should have put that in the blog post. And yeah. uh, maybe I'll make a note to add that. Doctor pronounced it dead. Anyway, yeah. so um, then he went on to basically talk about how all government is immoral and government is not the solution and a bunch of other anarchist talk. You know, it was beyond constitutionalism. It was like the constitution doesn't work, blah, 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 woof, woof. He didn't use the word anarchist, but he used the word voluntarism, which is almost a synonym for Mm -hmm. uh, anarchism. He he also explained the non-aggression principle uh, basically to people. And I loved how he called out, uh, you know, the society on it. He, He said, basically, you know, the, the government you get is a reflection of the society you have, and a society that would boo the golden rule is not a moral society which did at happen all, in, which in literally did happen. Yeah, and that's mind blowing to a lot of people. You know, not just anarchist or, or me or you, um, but you tell you tell any average person that that yeah, uh, this guy got booed at a Republican uh, debate, uh, primary debate for saying we should follow the golden rule. Who on earth would boo the golden rule i mean i i can't even fathom the the mental tricks that must go on in somebody's head to think of something like the golden rule which is treat others as you would like yourself to be treated um and and declare that to be something that's uh not a good thing uh, what what do you have to do in your head to tell yourself uh no no of course not i will treat people like slaves and i don't want to be a slave so ha huh. um very silly, completely silly. And I loved how he called them out on that. And then basically he told the Congress to their face that they were authoritarians. <laughs> and I know, that they were ruining the world to their face. And he's like, peace, I'm out of here. I know. The so. picture that I used was a cartoon that was like Ron Paul with a Burger King hat on, holding a mic like a rapper, going, F you, F you, F you, you're cool. F you, I'm out. Oh, I'm excited. Do I get to call you out on not having seen a movie? What Do you know what it? movie that's from? No. Finally, baked, finally, man. finally. Half baked. Yeah. Is it? Is it? Yeah, yeah. The movie about getting stoned that I watched while I was stoned. I, I remember enough to tell you that. Yeah, that's where the scene's from, man. Yeah, Isn't- it's the it's the Cuban guy um, who's also on the Chappelle show. Uh, he does he does that bit. Have you seen it? The wrap it up B. Yeah. Where it's Isn't the little Chappelle box. and John Stewart in that movie? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Chappelle, John Stewart, uh, Jim Brewer, who was on SNL for a while and did Goat Boy, and the Cuban guy. I'm being racist, but I don't know his name. <laughs> but yeah, the scene. He's like, uh, I guess they're maybe they're all trying to get sober or something, and for some reason he gets a fast oh, it's food at job. AA meeting or something? Or oh, it's no, he, he he gets a fast food job. That's why he's wearing the Burger King hat and. and <sighs> something gets to him and he just totally flips out and uh <laughs> he looks at everybody grabs he grabs the, like the order microphone you know like, um, double with g's and uh says hey, uh, f you f you f you f you you're cool and points at like some random guy the camera pans to and it's like some old guy it's like some old white guy's like i guess yeah <laughs> and then he says i'm out and he just throws the microphone and walks away it's great in burger king it, it's like the it, microphone it, yeah, used yeah. to get the orders on Right, right. It's awesome. it's it's the inspiration for the end of the I Own Me video when I throw the microphone at the at the end of the video. I just uh, like toss the microphone back, like fuck, like screw you guys, just throw yeah. it. So we're trying yeah, not to cuss because yeah. we're on radio now. So 
Uh, we're yeah, not yeah. going to be for long if we don't shh, stop cussing. Shh, but no cuss. No cuss. Cuss. Yeah. No, I, I, I secede from uh, whoever would tell me not to cuss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Secession well, down I'm telling to you not the to cuss, last so man. Are you seceding, seceding from me? No, I won't secede from you. Well, I'll, uh, I'll voluntarily there you apply go. the rules to myself. Yeah. Um, you know, the problem with this mic is it doesn't have an on-off switch like the other ones. Yeah, do, but uh, yeah, calling someone Cuban is not racist. But it is not. Just, it's, it's just like no, saying what, the guy in the green what, shirt, man. You're describing him. No, that's the, what Logan Logan Five is saying. He's saying, yeah, calling yeah. someone. I I said, yeah, maybe it's racist because I didn't know his name and I knew well, all the white a, people's names. There's there, there's a there's a thirty rock about that when Jack is dating the Puerto Rican woman, and he's uh-huh. like, "What do you call yourself? What should I call it? You know?" She's like, "What do you call yourself? I don't want to, you know, say anything wrong." And she's like, uh, I call myself Puerto Rican. And Jack's like, that doesn't sound right. Because <laughs> he's used to people saying it like, Puerto yeah. Ricans. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That would be Jack Donahue. Jack's awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's a nice story, Jack, but I don't hear my name in it. <laughs> so anyway, Ron Paul, one of the best comments I heard was um, someone on Reddit. Let me look the guy's name up. Um, Cryptoliff on Reddit said Ron Paul's speech was a more intellectual paraphrasing of Davy Crockett's you may all go to hell and I will go to Texas. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. That's really yeah. funny. Yeah. Um, yep. Oh, interesting of- about Reddit. Uh, I posted my blog post about, oh boy, I bet that sounded great. Wow. Let me look yeah. This. Yeah. Everyone was, went, that the, eh! was that the goose neck? That was the goose neck. It was the goose neck. Let me look on Gross. Reddit and see how this is doing. Okay. Um, okay. I while, while you do that, I'm going to address Manimal. Uh, he says his penis has tried to secede from his body. And I would say that's because you abuse it all the time. Well, okay. Five seconds till <laughs> someone posts the video <laughs> Detachable Penis, which is on YouTube by King Missile, mm-hmm. which uh, mm-hmm. I know those guys. They were friends of bomb. Okay. And that okay. video is shot by Richard Kern, who's in my DIY or Die movie. Yeah. Or uh, a shake somebody- weight infomercial. That would work as well. And Beavis and Butthead really liked that movie. So look up uh, Detachable Penis on... Ah, uh, uh, yeah. Don't yeah. think I'm going to do that. Okay, so <laughs> um, I posted this Ron Paul comes out as an anarchist on uh, the out, anarcho-capitalist... Out of the congressional closet, yeah. On the, on the Reddit anarcho-capitalist group uh-huh. and on the Ron Paul group. Uh-huh. Uh, the, ro- the anarcho-capitalist, it has 85 upvotes now, and on Ron Paul, it has 16 upvotes, which is actually... Nice. Um, it had downvotes last night. It was like, it was below zero, because the Ron Paul fans didn't want to consider that possibility, and they mm. voted it down, like, way below zero, and then mm. somebody pointed that out on the an- anarcho-capitalist group, and they went in there <laughs> and voted up. So there's a little uh, vote war over my blog post on Reddit. Wow, wow. Yeah, like I said, I mean, there's going to be a lot of people out there that get it now uh, and are just done with politics and the state, but um, it's not going to be everybody. There's always people that will stick to their religion no matter what. There's always going to be people that are too scared to take the training wheels off and uh, <laughs> and will keep thinking that as long as we change our overlord to somebody that, that can just get it right and educate the people to vote for the right overlord, um, then we can have, you know some kind of free society but uh they missed the point that uh you can't have a free society if you have an overlord by definition uh you have an overlord so uh but you know we we can we can only do so much michael yeah someone's looking someone's asking for the the rap songs from uh guns and weed and i know i did a blog post with links to all of them get the freedom fiends hip-hop man uh, people ask me a question yeah. i mean i run like eight blogs and they're all about me and Nima. So it's like, you know, I've got a link for that. There you go. Some are free, some are on uh, iTunes, but yeah, enjoy. There yeah. you go. Yeah, I was, uh, somebody else asked me for those songs too, and there was some that were missing though, aren't there? Oh no, they're all here. All here is YouTube videos. Oh yeah, somebody was asking me, I think, for MP3s where they download. Are the, these, all are M- these are MP3s. There's MP3s and YouTube videos. Uh, of one, two, three, four. No. Five. missing oh yeah i guess we got them all i thought because we there's some that are two in one uh we yeah. will not okay. um one okay. is freedom of ingestion is is in the same dueling. thing with dueling yeah yeah so yeah. yeah they're all right there man yeah all there 
including I Own Me and uh, obviously Obama's Feet Stink and Romney Likes the Smell. Yeah, which um, I changed. I didn't know you could change the title on YouTube. I saw that you changed you the name. You used to yeah. not be able to, but now like anytime you try to click on something to copy it when you're signed into your YouTube channel on your YouTube videos, it like mm-hmm. goes to edit mode. It's really, I yeah. don't like it, you know, but... But I, that's how I found out. I was trying to copy and paste it to do a Google search and ego search and see how many people were talking about our video. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh, you can edit this now. So Hey. Hey. Excellent. Um, yep. So back to Ron Paul, man. Uh, yeah, that's probably the best farewell speech. In, that's probably the best speech in Congress ever. I would, uh, I, I would say, say too, you know, and yeah. you know, the other, not that I watch C-SPAN all day, but, uh, I don't watch C-SPAN all day because all the other speeches suck. So, somebody said, somebody said, if, if Ron Paul said, F you, F you, F you, you're cool. F you, I'm out. Was the, you're cool. Dennis Kucinich. <laughs> Probably he's about the, you know, he's still a tyrant, but he, He's a good. Uh, he's good on the war, and he's good he on get, drugs. He, he gets it on the wars and, and most civil liberties. So yeah, maybe he's basically like percentage. he's basically like all Democrats used to be forty years ago. You know, uh, most Democrats yeah. except mm, he, except LBJ. Yeah, I, w- I would say he, he's like all like Democrat that. voters want yeah, want yeah. Democrats to really be. I wouldn't mm. say he's like Democrat politicians ever were. Uh, he's too principled for that. And and principle and politician are like uh, antonyms. They're they're the opposite <laughs> of each other. I know. And Ron Paul's the weird exception to it. You know, I never thought I'd be the guy who's like, I've given up on America because the guy I like didn't get elected, which is, you know, and even like Ron Paul's a government thug. He's my favorite government thug. But like um, my wife's father experienced that the year I was born. He liked Barry Goldwater, who was kind of, you know, he was he was kind of tyrant, but he really was like the spiritual godfather of the Libertarian Party. Uh, and he lost and my father-in-law went door to door, you know, trying to get people to vote for the guy. He was really involved. And when Goldwater lost, you know, my father-in-law was like, America's dead. Politics is dead. It's useless. And now he just goes and Mm. votes for Mickey Mouse. (laughs) That's hilarious. Uh, yeah, I know, you know, and it's funny because like my dad was really offended that I didn't vote, but this, but my, my father-in-law I've never talked to him about that in particular. I've talked to him about like total minarchy. He's basically in favor of it, but, mm, uh, mm-hmm. and he's a really like square dude, you know, who worked his whole life and, you know, has a nice place to show for it. And like, you know, isn't, isn't someone you'd think would be, you know, almost libertarian, but he is, but he really, you know, he was like, that's the end of the American empire in 64, the year I was born, uh, mm-hmm. when Goldwater didn't win. And I kind of feel that way. Even Wait, did Ron he say the end of the empire or end of the republic? Because uh, he knows uh, the difference. He knows it. He said republic. Uh, okay, good, good. But um, I wish the empire in it. I think well, that that's the problem. Is the empire has <laughs> has metastasized into the trapper keeper from that South Park episode, or just consumes everything into this horrible gelatinous blob, uh, and there's no no freedom to be found. No no semblance of the old republic. I wouldn't say it. I mean, I would I would put the death way earlier than 1960s. But um, yeah. But, you know, when you're involved and paying attention to a particular event, you know, you ah, feel yeah. like that when that happens. Yeah, so. yeah. Which, uh, that's kind of what people are blaming this whole secession movement on. Um, I was looking looking into it last night, and it seems like um, all the journalists and commentators are coming out and, and trying to dismiss the, the secessionist thing and be like, oh, well, it's all just sour grapes and boo-hoo, uh, quit being... Uh, you know, a negative Nancy and stop saying you're going to secede. It can't happen. We own you kind of a thing. You know, and I've actually seen some liberals say, let them. And then I'm thinking like, Mm -hmm. yeah, but you're not going to like that when the states that would probably secede are the ones that produce all your food (sighs) and energy and tax and most of your tax money. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the let them is a really good sentiment though. Um, we just all need to get that in our head that, uh, let them that should that should be the mantra for everybody right uh so and so wants to secede let them so and so doesn't want to secede let them um cuz that's that's the thing about secession that i guess makes people um you know upset about it is basically 
you're pledging your allegiance to another government, a smaller government. So if, if Texas seceded as in the petition to whitehouse.gov, which is also just silly to petition whitehouse.gov, but. Oh, and the I really digress. funny thing, the really funny thing is the city that you and Adam Curry live in, Austin, someone there has started a counter petition on whitehouse.gov that if Texas secedes, Austin stays part of the, of the federal government. Yeah, yeah. I guess they want to keep Austin weird because that's about the weirdest thing I could think of. <laughs> I know that's. So <laughs> I feel square. like you you could have keep a chance. Keep Austin Square, man. That's what their their yeah. motto should be. Well, it's it's like why not? If if that's how you feel, if you don't want to be, if you don't want to be lumped in with all these rednecks in you know West Texas or, or wherever, um, then then why not say, well, let's petition to be our own city. Why why do I have to uh, follow the edicts uh, of Joe Redneck uh, any more than I would want to follow the edicts of um, Barack Obama or, or any DC think tank yeah. stooge or anybody who writes legislation? I mean, if they're all equally distasteful, why do I have to pick one or the other? Uh, the let them is the mantra, right? That should be it. Uh, let, let people who love Barack Obama and are just elated at this uh, war criminals election uh, let them still bow before him and follow his every single word um, let turn, the people turn the for West some Coast, reason turn the Pacific Coast into berry land <laughs> yeah whatever the case is but th see that's the other thing is doesn't have to be geographic, right? Go to your Obama love fest meetings, uh, but don't make your neighbor do the same. If your if your neighbor, for some odd reason that I couldn't think of in the world, uh, thinks Romney should be his lord and master, let let him go to his Romney love fest meetings and let him uh, complain about gay marriage and and do whatever. But uh, but let let us let those people who don't want either Barack or Romney. Or Ron Paul. I don't want Ron Paul to be my overlord either. I don't want anybody to be my overlord. There, There is nobody in this world uh, that I would trust to run my life more than me. And I might not be the best at running my life. You know, I have my own problems, but it doesn't matter. If I make the wrong decision, at least I made it. And I can only blame myself. And I can't feel indignant at somebody forcing me to do something. Okay, I have an update on this. Uh, as of today, 50 people in 50 states have filed petitions on the White House. All of, them. all of them. Yes. All of all of them. <laughs> yeah, and it's this is it says 50 yeah. states have filed petitions. That's not true. People in 50 states, but there are 50 petitions. Uh, Wyoming has 9,000 people signed up, which I think is probably the highest per capita. I'm guessing. I'm not going to go to the White House and check the numbers in 50 states, but. Um, yeah, and a lot of people are calling them uh, racist. And I saw a good meme that was uh, it said, "Every time you call a secessionist a racist, a God kills a puppy." <laughs> yeah, yeah. People call them racist. Um, people have called it like, um, like I have a friend who's a really great friend of mine. He's a really great person. Um, he's a veteran and a Native American, and he's really taken a lot of offense to this. Uh, he's. He's literally called it, you know, these people are, I feel like they're shitting on my father and my grandfather's <laughs> grave because his father and his grandfather were also in the U.S. military. And he feels like I, I sacrificed, my family sacrificed all these things to give you your freedom and this is what you do with it. But, um, but let's take a step back and think about that, right? I mean, if you did fight for somebody's freedom and that's how you think of it, you know, I would argue otherwise. But if that's how you think of it, shouldn't they have the freedom to choose their own destiny? I mean, isn't yeah. that in essence what freedom is? And if you fought for their freedom. Them, then you should be happy that they're exercising it in whatever way they see fit. That's the definition of freedom. And a lot of vets are actually uh, flying an upside down American flag now, which seems really un-American. But what it really means is distress. Ah, of course. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, here's an article bashing the secession thing. Uh, states with the most signatures to secede took millions in federal money. And I'm like, the states aren't trying to secede. People in those states and people, those people who signed mm -hmm are probably right. against taking any federal money. Yeah. Yeah. Well that yeah, that's a very important distinction to make. It's basically because, saying um, you're using the roads. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah, some people say uh, oh states have filed to secede. No, that's not what happened. The politicians uh, are ju are just as upset with this as Barack Obama. Rick Perry. Uh, just think of how much of a politician he is. Did you hear his statement on this? Uh, you remember Rick Perry, the the supposed firebrand Texas governor, um, back in the early days, like right even before he announced that he was running for president and joined the primaries, he grandstanded about Obamacare and said, "Well, you know, Texas was its own nation before." 
Could be again. Yeah, I'm but just people, saying. They're all backpedaling now that they're where they want to be. Exactly. Like, he literally he was he was called on it. Somebody, some, a reporter said, "Well, what do you what do you feel about this? You know, you've commented on this before." Uh, I think he said, "I'm paraphrasing, but somewhat tightly." Uh, he said, "Well, we've got a great union. I wouldn't want to make any changes <laughs> like that." Yeah, and you know, great Matt Mead, the oh, Wyoming yeah. governor. There's no way he's gonna. He was a federal attorney. He's not gonna buck. He right, bucked the right. system to get elected, and once he was elected, became a little, uh, you know, I'm at the table with the big boys kind of guy. Well, but, you know, we we always talk about slippery government slopes. Like, well, if if the government can control this aspect of society, then that will lead them to control this aspect, and they'll control it more. You know, they control guns, and they can control the really, bedroom. You're really excited. You're clipping now too. People are saying. Ah, um, sorry. Okay. And I, and I can't get a word in edgewise, but you know, I'll look. I'll let you go. I'll look at this baby squirrel out my window here on November fifteenth, two thousand and twelve. Mm, mm. But uh, well, you interrupted me, so uh, just go on with what you were going to say. I'll, <laughs> I'll I'll step back. Um, oh, you're really excited about this. That's a good thing. Um, would Would you like me to be more subdued on our live radio show? I can do that. I don't know. It sounds kind of yeah. good when we do, I think. It sounds kind of sexy. See, right. I have a theory that these um, these petitions, which I'm, I'm glad they exist. I, there's, I, don't, I would not go near the whitehouse.gov website. And, mm. you know, I believe I should be able to be free, but there's no way I'm going to go sign an ele- electronic piece of paper and put my name and city down and say, please, tyrant, please, slave master, let me stop being a slave. Uh, I have a theory... You know, I like to start alternative conspiracy theories, and I don't always really believe them, but they're all – so many things are true that were conspiracy theories at one time that now I'm like I, – I believe the possibility of almost anything. I consider the possibility that these petitions were started by Cass Sunstein, <laughs> you know, the uh, Obama – former Obama czar of everything who mm-hmm. has left that post to go uh, probably be the ne- next Supreme Court appointee although um, he would probably love that you think that didn't he write yeah. that uh that the government should make up conspiracy theories so that yeah, they can well, then discredit why, them and make conspiracy theorists look silly right and that's why i think maybe he or someone like him in <laughs> in or around the white house started these petitions to you know give them some some ability to say look at all these crazy people and we must do something or you know to have a list of names to harvest to uh see who to watch closely you know seven states as of yesterday it's probably more today have reached the twenty five thousand signature limit uh and they are different petitions each state has a different petition Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and the way the whitehouse.gov petition thing works which is obama's transparency when he's not busy jailing whistleblowers you know, he promised transparency, and this is one of the things he came up with, So, or his people came up with. So the, the yeah. rule on there, the, the thing they say on there is when it gets to 25,000 signatures, Obama will look at it and give a response. <laughs> and I'm thinking the response will be a drone or FEMA camps, you know, and and de- people say, deportation, that'd be great. And I'm like, to where? No. You know, no. they'll, put you, they'll take everything you own, they'll put you in Gitmo or FEMA camp, you know, while they look for a place that will take you. Most likely that'll be some country that hates the U.S. You know, hopefully it'd be somewhere like Russia where, you know, you could probably have some fun, but more likely it'd be Venezuela. <laughs> I don't know if I'd go that far. I will I will repeat what I said on the Tuesday cast, which is, uh, why should I have to leave? They're the ones who suck. I know. I mean, seriously. Office space about Michael. Yeah. 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 yeah, I don't. I don't feel any desire to leave, and I, I hate that. I've always hated that sentiment. Well, just get out if you don't like Merca. No, no, Mer- Merca America is all up my, in my ass. Yeah, America they should get, get out of get my out pocketbook. Of my, get out of my uterus. They're, yeah. in my, they're the sand in my <laughs> vagina. Yeah, yeah. Oh, speaking of the rap songs, yeah, keep the U.S. out my bloodstream. I said in in Freedom yeah. of Ingestion. I, I mean, wrote that, but you said that. Yeah, yeah. Mm-mm-mm. You didn't give write me what, credit. How, give me credit. Okay, okay. You you consulted. I'll put it that way. I consulted. I was <laughs> I was brought in as a consultant. And that's yes. what basically what a producer is, you know. Yeah, oh, this baby yeah. squirrel is so cute. He's up in my tree and the squirrels are merry. He's about half the size. We got a bunch of baby squirrels. They're like half the size of a squirrel and what did you say about old men? Old men love watching animals outside their window and from park benches for some reason. I don't get it. 
Uh, I mean, well, animals are cute, not, but it's not I don't, just from the window. I go out there. I'm not terrified <laughs> of the squirrels. I, I must watch them through a powerful telescope. Uh, uh, nice, yeah, man, nice. I go out and hand feed them. Uh, I, I guess I can see the appeal. It's just uh, it, maybe it's it's too because I, I was thinking, you know what it is? Is uh, your house is your castle? Uh, people say that. Um, yeah. The squirrels are your serfs. <laughs> you yeah, feed and, them. You provide for them. They're your, you know, your loyal when subjects. You're, when you're older, if you have your shit together and didn't marry young and get divorced and have some crazy lady take everything you own and destroy your will to live. Like some people, <laughs> I didn't do that. I got married at 40, 41 uh-huh, um, uh-huh. to a great lady. So, uh, you know, if you do things right, you end up, uh, when you're, you know, 48, 50, you know, you, you have a nice house and you have a yard and you have a, you live in a nicer neighborhood. And so your, your house really is a castle. It's not like a castle where you're fighting off punks who are shooting your cat with a BB gun. Like I had in LA. You know? <laughs> yes. Yes. It's, so, nice. it's nice. I, I, I can see the appeal. I can see the appeal. Um, also, you know, it's, it's basically by the time you get to that age, you realize that humans are incredibly disappointing and horrible, so you trust animals more because they're consistent. You know they'll try to bite you, but uh, they don't. They don't plot against you or try to steal your stuff mm, that you know of. <laughs> and when they try to steal my stuff, my cat eats them. And mm. she's thirteen, and she's still bringing me dead, dead or mm. dying, eviscerated mice. Yeah, your cats are the knights of Nestlandia, <laughs> although Peanut and Fuzzy are very lazy and surly about it. Lazy Char- and it's, it's, it's it's up to Charlie to uh, continue the tradition. Uh, someone said, and a picket fence. <laughs> Should I take a picture out my window of my picket fence? I think I'll do that. Mm. So you talk more. Do you have a picket? Do you have a picket fence? Well, I have a. I, no, I have a like really solid, uh, you know, oh. slat fence that keeps everything out. It's great. Mm. MWD Slats. fiend, you don't have a cat. <laughs> hey, smugglers on here. I have a cat. What are you saying? I don't have a cat. I have three you, you cats. Have ca- cats you have you don't me. have a cat. They you have, have you have me. squittins. Oh, they have you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Smugglers on here. Smugglers like a rock star. Uh, hacker, um, I, I mean, who I think you we just could, outed. Well, everyone knows that. I mean, every, you know, he has he writes books as smuggler. Did, is he in a smuggler? Oh, he is in a smuggler. Okay, cool, yeah. cool, cool. But you know, I mean, if uh, you know, if if we were cool before, if these people on this cast know what they're talking about, you know, talking about Stallman is cool. But this is like a visit from the Pope. The fact that smugglers in here now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Pope. Yeah. So talk about secession. I'm gonna um take a picture out the window of my fence and my squirrels and, and upload it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, I guess my whole thing with secession is uh, maybe it's the word. You know, people seem to balk at they that can't word. Spell it. They always spell succession. Succession. Yeah, um, I mean, it's not the easiest word in the world to, sm- to spell. To smell, smell, yes, to smell, sm- wake up and smell the secession. But, uh, you know, that's what, uh, that's what the little red squiggly line under it when you type it wrong is for. You just right click that, folks, and it'll tell you the right way to spell it. And you just mm. click on that. There you go. News now, a you lot can of times use, idiots. It'll auto correct secession to succession because they're so close. Oh, really? Mine doesn't do that. No. But I guess because I probably write secession more than I write session. Uh, <laughs> Succession is the order of, you know, if the president can't fulfill his duties, who takes his place? Ah, uh, uh, oh, you mean that kind of secession, uh, like, yeah. uh, like kind of like a progression. Yeah, well, um, I was searching uh, for the number of states and I searched Google secession, White House, uh, states. And the thing that came up was the White House list of the like who succeed, succeeds who mm, mm, okay. in the event okay. that they can unfulfill the duties of their crown. <laughs> like a beauty the queen. crown gets passed to. Yeah. 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 Which becomes scary because, uh, yeah, Obama is pretty horrible, but could you imagine Biden, Joe <laughs> Biden being the president? He would who's after turn, that? The, the speaker of the house. Um, would that be would Boehner? Ju- he, would, he would just turn it over to Nancy. Who's third in line. It, oh, oh, did the, I, I didn't even pay attention. Did the Democrats take back the the House of Representatives? Is it Nancy Pelosi again? Is I did I thought she wasn't even a Congresswoman anymore. I thought I thought Boehner was the the Speaker of the House. I don't know, man. Uh, I guess I should know that, but uh, I've been paying much much less attention to these silly men in suits who pretend to have the right to rule over me. Um, but I was thinking of that word, you know, secession. It seems to be uh, very divisive and. 
people do have misconceptions about it, and people like Tom Woods have tried to point out that uh, it's not necessarily racist, and the first secessionists were actually people who were abolitionists who didn't want their states to have to obey the fugitive slave law, uh, which was a federal law that said even if you're a non-slave state, uh, if you if the police there catch a slave, uh, they're obligated to return that slave to its master in the southern slave state. Um, people who were abolitionists thought that's ridiculous. We have no, we don't feel any moral, uh, morally compelling reason why we should follow this law. There's, we, we don't believe owning people is a good thing. We're not going to support the system like that. And they, they bandied about the idea of, of seceding from the union just for that reason. So secession has that root, which is very anti-slavery. Also, um, secession in America, uh, I mean, that's like, as American as apple pie, uh, and Ron Paul has said as much. Good to go back to him. Um, you, we wouldn't have a modern American state, which uh, I don't know <laughs> is that all all that great a thing. But we wouldn't have the modern American government, the Constitution, or anything like that without secession. Uh, go back and read the Declaration of Independence. A lot of the people who've been very anti-secession have been saying things. Well, you know, the unconditional surrender of the Southern states says that you know settle that issue there's no secession well take a step back and look at the declaration of independence which basically says um if if the government is not securing the liberty of the people I ugh i'm so sick of looking at steve's wedding pics and i'm all out of passive aggressive comments what else am i supposed to do at work all day sick of stalking your ex on facebook yeah are you all out of cute cats and autocorrect mishaps to lol at duh freedom fiends to the rescue the fiends now have a blog read all about the latest tyranny today Dream about lip pair. Laugh while Western civilization collapses. Just click on the cat icon to the right of freedomfiends.com. Freedom Fiends blog. Read it! You've read books, attended lectures, and you know the Constitution well enough to know it's a well-crafted blueprint to create an ever-increasing federal empire. But there's still one thing missing. Buttons! Freedom Fiends now has buttons. We have Freedom Fiends, Anarchy Gumbo, and two designs for guns and weed the road to freedom. Wear them with pride. Use them to start conversations with statists. It's only $6 for four buttons, including shipping. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the link at the top that says buttons. Want to contribute to Liberty but short on cash? You can help the Freedom Fiends without even spending a post-1964 dime. Download uTorrent and start seeding Fiends episodes. Follow twitter.com slash fiendtorrents to grab the past episodes and new ones as they post. Leave your computer on seeding the torrents while you're at work or asleep. The more people seeding the Fiends, the more drone-proof we'll be when the boot comes down. That's twitter.com slash fiendtorrents. To to throw that government off. They have a right to say, well, hey, I don't like this government. Um, you know, all, all political power should rest on the consent of the governed. Unfortunately, it actually does rest in the barrel of a gun. Um, so I think maybe secession, even though those things I, I find to be true, uh, people don't get it. And, and my wife keeps telling me, you know, it's not about what's actually true. It's not about facts so much. It's about how people feel. Because uh, people... They don't really care about seeking knowledge. They just care about having their own feelings confirmed. Um, they feel a certain way about something, and in today's age of media everywhere, uh, they can pretty much, no matter what they feel, they can find somebody on the internet or on Fox News or wherever to confirm their feeling. Um, and say things that make them feel good inside. So if people hate secession, um, me, me explaining history to them I don't think is going to work. Um, and I don't know if my solution is right, but in the blog post I try to argue maybe we should think of other words, uh, other concepts for those of us who don't want to be under the yoke of Obama or the federal government. Uh, and I thought of, what about conscientious objector, right? Um, there you go. And maybe that'll maybe that'll help with the lefties who are getting so upset at, at secession because they'll they'll tie that conscientious objector term back to in v the anti-war movement in Vietnam. Are there which, even uh, conscientious objectors anymore? Interestingly, uh, there can be. Um, my wife directed me to the Selective Service website, which uh, is another interesting thing to go look at. If you think we're a free country uh, and you think, oh, well, you know, the mil there's no draft anymore, go to the, the Selective Service website and you'll realize that you are. The government claims 
ownership of you, your life, and your body. Um, you have to sign up for that when you're 18 to get pretty much any kind of government program. To, to go to college, uh, to get financial aid, you have to sign up for that. Um, and you read through the site, there is a section about conscientious objector. Uh, and they do provide avenues for people who They put who you do- in the military and have you not hold a gun, right? Sort of, um, although now they've expanded it to other service. You still have to be in service of the state. You still have to give your labor to something, but they say you you can stay in town and be a nurse or whatever. Uh, you can stay home. You don't have to go out necessarily. Um, basically, you have to write them a letter explaining your conscientious objection, and then the good folks over there will figure out what you can do to service the state, but you still have to give up uh, the right to the fruits of your own labor, and you still have to give up the freedom to choose what you do with your time. Uh, you s- and, and in the end, you're still supporting it, right? I mean, even if you're uh, at home putting all your effort into something peaceful like uh, being a nurse or doing paperwork for some government agency so that the person who used to do the paperwork can go kill Chinamen, um, you're still, it, it, your support is what allows somebody else to go do the killing. Your support is what allows um, those extra resources to be used in the war. Uh, so... The conscientious objector, uh, as according to the government, obviously isn't the best situation in the world. Although I would argue it's better than having to carry a gun and and kill somebody who's never. Not tried just to guns hurt are bad. I'm literally carrying a gun right now. I just don't want to carry their carry gun. a government gun. Yeah, that's the important distinction. Um, but uh, I don't know. I, I like I like the term because I like its words. I like conscientious objector because I'm not just an anarchist. Because oh, screw everything. I want to break windows. Uh, I've consciously come to that realization through thought, and I object to the idea that somebody else has um, has the right to rule me, to take my money, to force me into patterns of behavior that I don't want to be forced into. I conscientiously object to that. Um, I mean, so much so that I would never sign a petition because I wouldn't want to support or give any credence to the fact that Obama thinks – Obama wants people to think that, hey, oh, you just go to whitehouse.gov and get what you want. And if you get 25,000 people, he'll address it. Uh, I don't think that. I'm too conscientious to think that. Um, so, yeah, I, I think maybe we should start using that. Uh, instead of secession, let's all conscientiously object. And if enough people do it, um, you know, we won't have a government. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I've just been posting pictures of uh, baby squirrels on the chat room. <laughs> baby squirrels. Yeah, it was good. Hey, you, that's you, a you, lot more uh, peaceful <laughs> well, than, uh, you know, doing doing nothing is better than doing evil. You know, exactly. I'm, exactly. I'm, people could say, well, you're an anarchist and you don't vote and you're not involved in politics, so you're not doing anything. No, I'm doing nothing today that harms anybody. Yeah, yeah. Anybody Although, involved in politics is being a worse person than me because yeah. I'm wasting my time posting pictures of baby squirrels. <laughs> Speaking but of don't monkeys do typing. You, you spend so much time uh, trying to teach people about these things and trying to talk about them. Look at this uh, link I just posted about the infinite monkeys theorem, which is the theory that ah, it, yeah. it's a mathematical kind of explanation. It's something to the effect of like, you know, an infinite number of monkeys typing an infinite amount of time will produce the great works. It will produce the works of Shakespeare verbatim. Uh, and there's variations on it. You know, a thousand monkeys typing for a hundred years, whatever. Someone actually tried that. They didn't, <laughs> didn't have an infinite amount of money, but it was with an art grant, a government grant in the, in the UK. Um, not only did the monkeys produce nothing but five pages consisting largely of the letter S, and this is my analogy for like <laughs> Congress and politics, okay? But the lead uh-huh. male began by bashing the keyboard with a stone, and the monkeys continued by urinating and defecating <laughs> on the typewriter. So uh, uh, monkeys are not random g- mon- number generators, and a group of them together is uh, – Initiates aggression, you know, and I, I'd say that's a good analogy for politics. For right Congress. There. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they don't pr- produce freedom. They just so, shit all over know, it. You're doing yeah. nothing. Good. I don't want to be yeah, typing yeah. the letter S and defecating and bashing things that <laughs> someone else owns. <laughs> I don't want to be doing harm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Do no why, harm. You, you, you'll notice, yeah, politicians don't take anything similar to the Hippocratic Oath. They don't yeah. ever say do no harm. I know they, they, they do Ron, plenty of harm. That's their Ron job. Paul has said that uh, 
that, that they should. He said that at one point, I remember. Has he? Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. He's a doctor. Yeah. It makes sense. <sighs> there you go. Um, yeah, there was this guy at work who uh, I've talked about before. I'm trying to convince him to not be a government goon or a cop. Um, and he usually takes some things to heart, and then he changes, and he tries to come up with some other kind of goon that he can be. Like, oh, well, I'll work for Interpol, uh, and then I won't be, you know, as much of a government goon. Uh, and I have to, you know, explain things to him. And um, he was like, you know, I just feel like I, I need to pay it back. I need I need to give something back to society because society's been good to me. Uh, and I just feel like that that's an important thing for people to serve. And I was like, well, you don't, I don't feel like you serve anybody by uh, giving people speeding tickets. You don't serve anybody by enforcing the edicts of politicians. Um, I mean, yeah, you might. He was like, well, what if, you know, some woman is getting hurt and I go break it up and, and arrest the guys that were hurting her? It's like, yeah, but you can do that as a private citizen, too. Um, you know, you don't need to be wearing a badge to do that. And also, he's like, well, what do I do then? What do I do to serve? Uh, you, you do something that people like, you know, just, just the very fact, um, you know, you be an entrepreneur or you get a job and that's an honest job and you're providing good to the world. I mean, I feel much more served by somebody making me a burrito at Chipotle. I feel so much (laughs) infinitely more served by them than I feel served by a cop who serves me a notice to go to court. I mean, don't you? I mean, I don't feel served at all by cops. I I get scared. I I get that adrenaline rush, that pit in my stomach when I see their lights. And not the good adrenaline rush. No. They get they get an adrenaline rush they like by giving you a ticket. They get a boner and their hearts pound. There's actually been stud there have actually been studies about how cops uh you know, a lot like part of why they become cops is because a lot of them are adrenaline junkies. Not all of them, but mm. some of them are, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. especially the ones that go into like banging down doors for a living. So I want to post mm-hmm. this thing um, from Politico.com in the chat room about uh, a Wyoming, um, Montana, the state, one, one north state, one state north of Wyoming where I live. Uh, Wy- a Montana lawmaker has asked to be paid in gold. And, you know, some people are like, cool. But first of all, um, no, not cool. He's stealing money. And he's and yeah. like, yeah, he didn't really understand it. Like his his words were like, I believe that if you take a look at the Constitution, that's what it says, you know, and I'm like, OK, you're going to enforce the Constitution for your rep- as a representative. And the only way you want to enforce it is give me gold. <laughs> nothing for your yes, the people you're yes. representing i must Just have that gold give me gold <laughs> i was to understand and, there would be gold if i got elected <laughs> you know he doesn't uh-huh. say anything about fiat money he doesn't understand uh-huh. any of that he just right, says right. you know i think like one of his constituents wrote him a letter and said you know, yeah, yeah the government's gonna fail we should go to gold and instead of saying montana should go to you know accepting debts and paying debts in gold mm-hmm, he's mm-hmm. like give me gold yes <laughs> He just came to the meeting and was like, I heard there'd be punch and pie. I heard there'd be punch and gold. <laughs> and gold. Oh, man. What a tool. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 It, yeah. Do- it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't work that way, folks. Um, <laughs> although, <laughs> the, the misconception people have, too. Um, oh, there on, on the Ron Paul video, you know, where he gives his farewell speech, uh, one of the first comments, at least last night when I looked at it, uh, I guess it was on Washington Post, I think, posted it, or some statist rag. And, and the first comment was like, you know, Ron Paul is such a hypocrite. He only wants market solutions when they agree with what he wants to have happen. For instance, gold. Uh, the market hasn't chosen gold as the currency, but he wants to force us all to use it uh, with a gold standard. And no, no, Ron Paul has never promoted a government gold standard. In fact, when asked about that, he says, no, it, if you, the government controls it, you have bimetallism and you have the government setting the price between gold and silver and, and the spread between them. And then you have the same problem where the government is trying to control the price of money, which is a function that the market needs to take. Um, and I've had conversations with people too saying, well, you know, uh, I, I don't see how telling the government that only people could use, that people could only use gold would make anything better. It's like, no, it wouldn't. As, as if the government has control of the gold, you'll have the same problem as if the government has control of the paper. I mean, the Romans were able to inflate their gold currency by taking less gold and putting more out of the, you know, the other metals into it to make it more of an alloy. Uh, anytime the well, that government was, that's pretty common with older gold coins is little bits shaved off because everybody who would, every time it would pass from one hand to the other, people would shave a tiny bit off. Mm, mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which, you um, know, 
uh, it could be taken care of by having Bitcoin backed by gold but, uh, <laughs> by many central agencies, not one central agency, many central private agencies, you know, that compete and are vetted by, you know, some sort of like uh, under underwriters, laboratories, independent type agencies. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, Underwater the thing is laboratories. That- there, sh- there shouldn't be any kind of plan or system. Like I was talking to somebody, he's like, "Well, why why should we have a gold system?" And I'm like, "Well, we shouldn't." No, shouldn't what I'm talking about system. would evolve would evolve on its own. Exactly, it, would, it wouldn't exactly. be a, it would be a system, but it would be a living, breathing, changing, ah, self natural system. system. Right, yeah. right, right. Don't don't um, bash systems. I mean, systems are what hold the universe and people together. Yes, you're right. I'm sorry. Uh, sy- systems are good, but. Uh, Centrally planned systems. So this uh, Montana state senator, Jerry O'Neill, who asked to be paid in gold, and he said it's because he doesn't trust the government money. And I'm thinking, like, if you don't trust the government, you should quit your tax-funded job. (laughs) You don't trust yourself, buddy. Don't say, give me gold. (laughs) That's not (laughs) representing. I mean, even in in a minarchist hat sense. Yeah, yeah, totally. So I sent you a link for... uh, a definition of a word that someone turned me on to statheist. Why don't you read that? I said on the statheist, one who rejects religion as irrational, but who advocates the existence of the state, usually as a desperate compensation for the comfort that religion brings. The term is most often used by anarchist atheists to demonstrate to the statheist that the logic they use to justify the state is faulty, even though they had sufficient logic to reject religion, implying that they are reproducing the same errors in thinking that they profess to despise in religious people. Excellent. I didn't know that word exists. That's a I great like word. A yeah, me too. Yeah, so um, I want to get back to audio tips for a minute. Um, we okay. want to explain, we explained it on our other cast, but we have a different audience here, so we should explain why we had so many problems last week and how your uh, wife had to stand in the corner afterwards. <laughs> in a slip <laughs> yeah I'm, and uh first i do want to preface it with saying hey i was a little bit i i let it get to me usually i don't um but i did at that time i, I very rarely break character <laughs> but uh all our really? audio I don't problems remember. what did you do i don't know i was just crunchy man i was like saying f this and and oh, i can't believe the world's out to get me first of all that's was it not, amusing? That, i felt i felt like it was annoying it was annoying not, when i listened to it well the it was, that's not breaking character. That's another, you know, you're yeah. usually you, and that was you angry. Uh, yeah. you, don't have to, you, know, you don't have to sugarcoat it for our listeners. I mean, these, these I know. people. I just, I just like to be calm and collected and feel in control of my domain, and I, I didn't. And I, I let it show that I didn't. I mean, I uh, think that the audio problems were a lot more annoying than you complaining about them. I was, I was uh, amused because, okay. you know, conflict is the essence of drama. And when yeah. I have Adam Curry's money, I'm going to hire, when I steal Adam Curry's money, I'm <laughs> going to hire a choir to make a, hire a choir bump yeah. that says conflict is the essence of drama. So yeah. anyway, um, yeah, explain what happened and then I'll go into my tip about people who don't know what they're using shouldn't mm. use expensive mics which isn't a comment on you it's a comment on, well i will say if you want proof for that just listen to adam kokesh's podcast he's using a really <laughs> nice expensive <laughs> condenser mic and he pretty much sounds like ass and uh, um i would be willing to you know sit him down and tell him how to fix it for free i would do that for free but uh you know he won't want me to do that but it's interesting might, for a while have you offered i'm offering now so okay Anyone who listens to Adam Kokesh can pass this information on him. But he actually, his mic was broken for a while, and he didn't fix it for a couple weeks. And somebody mm. started a Facebook page called Boycott Adam Kokesh Until He Fixes His Mic. <laughs> well, I'm glad and you bring that up because that was the exact two, problem. It has two users. One is me, and one is the guy who started it. Uh, <laughs> and then he, But he did respond to it. He tweeted, it's not the mic. It's something between the soundboard and the broadcast computer. And I'm like, mm. which is something I'd fix live on the show because I know what I'm doing. But uh, he can contact me. I'll walk him through. You know, yeah. I tell him to get a cheaper mic and uh, yeah. do it with that. Well, you know, live radio, uh, sometimes it's tough to, we were trying to troubleshoot live and I mean, we did fix it to where it worked. Um, I misdiagnosed it. I was diagnosing it as something to do with the, uh, the phantom power. I was using, you know, a hundred dollar condenser mic and it sounds pretty good. And I use it for the Curry show because there's less background noise on it than the ribbon mic. Uh, and there's not really a proximity effect. It's got a bigger pickup pattern so I can move around more and still be at 
pretty much the same volume. Are you using a pop filter? A pop I am filter. Good. Using a using a pop filter. Yeah, using the the well the windscreen you gave me. I don't you know. Have a pop and anybody on top anybody who says, well, you guys are talking like audio experts, but you don't sound good. It's it's a, it's a function of this network, man. Listen to our Sunday show. It's flawless, one hundred percent of the time. It's, it's it's more complicated the way we get into this show. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. you know, I'm not bashing the people. They're, they're working on it. I mean, Adam Curry has problems sometimes, and he's fixed some of them by replacing Skype with Mumble to talk to John at my suggestion. But uh, it's still hot sometimes. We're still hot sometimes here. But on our Sunday show, we just mumble in, and it works. It's always flawless. But it's filled mm. with wall-to-wall ads that we mm. can't yeah. get rid of. Yeah. So uh, we like yeah. this better. Well, I won't say we like this better. <laughs> we, we, I enjoy they, they each have their benefits and their detriments. Um, but yeah. Yeah, the, the problem on the last show was mainly that the, the condenser mic broke. And it, it had been broken for about a week, and I thought it was the tube in the preamp, and we talked about that on the show, and I fixed the tube. Uh, same problem, so I was like, oh, it's the phantom power. Um, I had to quickly switch, like as fast as I could, because we didn't really realize this until five minutes before the show, and then I was troubleshooting other things. Know, today, ta- today I made you come on 25 minutes early. So made me? No, that was my suggestion. I said oh, we yeah. should start doing that every time before the Thursday show, yeah, so we can I'm actually- I'm jumping in front of your parade and saying it was my idea. Of but, course, uh, yeah, like you do. Um, uh, and so, yeah, I was able to switch quickly to the ribbon mic, um, but you know, uh, the settings were still all for the condenser mic, and so, and, and I had to run it a way I don't normally run it because I did it so quick. I want I wanted it to be quick, so we had some you know audio problems being too loud and then too quiet, and uh, it was mostly because uh, on the fly I had to switch mics to a ribbon mic, which is persnickety. Um, but, you know, after that, I plugged the condenser mic into a different preamp with Phantom Power and had the same problem. Uh, and then I plugged in a non, you know, I, I turned on the Phantom Power on everything and it didn't have the problem. So I was like, ah, uh, it's the mic. The mic died. It's a dead mic. Uh, dead I first mic of all didn't, in the house, didn't, yo. I didn't know that condenser mics did that. I thought they lasted forever, but apparently that's not true. Uh, or not forever, but, you know, a couple decades at least. You know, you see all those well, studios know, where people have like 100 year old mics that still work and they use yeah, them but, to mic famous people. And, again, I go back to you lived to, when you lived in Casper. I've, I've been to your house. You had your mic set up and you smoked a pipe and various things in that pipe, including tobacco, (laughs) like Uh feet away from it. And that house was dingy and damp and you Uh didn't collect your, you didn't take your garbage out. There was like, you know, food garbage piled up and, you know, (laughs) the dog chewed on your mic probably when you weren't there. I mean, you're living a lot nicer now. You you got married and she civilized you a bit. Uh, yeah well we've civilized each other i think i don't know the webcam i hid in your apartment went down can you uh <laughs> poke it with a broom for me please yeah well apparently you haven't been looking at it if you think i'm uh but anyway <laughs> so you know i'm uh, lying <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, anyway, uh, you know, I was like talking to you about it and it's like, well, why do I really need a condenser mic? I mean, why do I need to have the extra thing that can go wrong in the phantom power? Um, why do I need to have this big bulky thing that doesn't, you know, fit into most mic stands? I have to have some kind of fancy shock for it. Most talk radio uses dynamic mics, not condenser mics. Most, most use an RE20, which is bigger and more expensive. But the reason they use an RE20, I mean, it's not any more spectacular than the mic I'm using right now. Um, it's basically, it has a really, it has a wide um, cardioid pickup pattern, pickup pattern and mm-hmm. it has no proximity effect. So yeah. it's really good for people who've never been interviewed. And radio right. stations often bring someone in one time because they have an interesting story. And yeah. if they were using other kinds of mics, they'd be like, okay, I'm off mic. I'm off axis. Yeah. You know, like on yeah. an RE20, this wouldn't sound off axis. It would sound like this. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. But, you know, since yeah, I so- have mic technique, I'm using a mic that doesn't have a lot of proximity effect. Uh, you know, like, let me, uh, I unplug the other one. The other one has way, you can do yours, do a proximity effect, talk kind of quietly from like three inches away, and then get right up here and show the difference. Okay. This is me about four inches away. And this is me now. Do you like that sound? It's, it's yeah. got a little bit more low Bass. end, and yeah. it's kind of sexy. So, yeah, I mean, dynamic mics are pretty great. 
I think the ribbon mic I have sounds a lot better, but it's more persnickety. It's more delicate, I think. Um, this, you know, cheapo dynamic mic sounds almost as good, good enough for podcasting, and it's cheap enough to where I can just keep it mounted to the mic stand 24-7. If the cats break it, I'm out, you know, a cheap lunch. Not Well, yeah, 17 bucks your, your mic cost. Mine costs yeah. about 130 Uh Mine is the... Beta, the Sure Beta SM, uh, what's it called? This the 57A, which is an update of the 57. The 57 is like the rock and roll mic. And let's talk about that a little bit. I have some notes on that. Um, right. the, the 57 is the president's mic, it's the king's mic. It's what is on and has been on the president's podium of all U.S. presidents, uh, for since like the 60s or 50, 65. Oh, um, oh, 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 and, and oh, oh, nice. <laughs> I used to spend all my money on heroin. Now I spend it on microphones and audio gear. It's the same problem, but I have something to show for it other than track marks. And, you know, mm. somebody <laughs> like bitched about like, well, owning too many guns is rampant consumerism. And I'm like, okay, I have rampant consumerism for microphones and audio gear too, but you benefit, not just me, you know, yeah. you, yeah. the listener, <laughs> you, the listener. There you go. There you go. Yeah, you know, man. It's, it's I, I feel like with mics, you got to have different tools for different jobs, and yeah. and you know, uh, right now, I, I probably will get you know that same SM Beta uh, dynamic mic for my next big mic purchase, rather than getting a new condenser mic, because uh, I feel like that's more, a more versatile tool, uh, and also I think it'd be better for recording things uh, musically um, than a condenser mic. Uh, it's easier to mount and put in different places as well. And, you know, when I want that nice, unique sound that you can't get from a dynamic mic, I've got the ribbon mic. So I think, I think yeah. dynamic and ribbon right now are the two uh, yeah. mics I'd like to rock. Yep. Um, the SM50, the Sure Beta F, uh, Sure Beta 57A, uh, is, it's, uh, it's really commonly used in, in places of worship and courtrooms. It's the church and state mic, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna liberate it. <laughs> the church and state mic. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like on Arrested Development, the church and state fair. Uh, the church and state fair. I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you yeah, know, and yeah, thing- where uh, where um, George Senior tries to go to a scared straight thing, but it's not scared straight like stay out of prison. It's scared straight like don't be gay. He goes to the church <laughs> one instead of the state one. Yeah, and he's he's telling the the little um, curious children about being in prison, <laughs> and they're all curious, like, well, yeah, what yeah. does the guy look like that's coming up to you behind you in the dark? Is there a cover charge? <laughs> Is there a cover charge? Yeah, that's best. Any questions? Is there a cover charge? Yeah. I want to go to there. <laughs> so, you know, the, the, the Sure Beta 57 a is an update on the, SM, the SM57 Sure mic, which is the presidential mic. Um, it's interesting to me that they haven't updated the president's mic to this mic because it is better. It's the same kind of mic, but it's better. Uh, I think it's because people are used to the sound of the president coming through the SM57 and they want consistency mm. of that is mm-hmm. the voice of our dear leader. Dear leader. Yeah. Dear leader. I don't know. I, do you think it's like a subconscious thing? I, I, I don't think people's ears are that. It could be, it could be if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But, you know, it's interesting. Usually people that have unlimited stolen money go for the most expensive stuff they they can get. I mean, they're using, they have two mics on there. One's a backup in case the other fails. And they have, uh, you know, it's the SM57, which is like what rock people use to mic their guitar amps. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here, I'll, I'll post a picture of Obama at the podium with his two SM57s. Lucky young Obama. Yeah. yeah. All right. Ew. Ew, Obama. Ew. Uh, young, young Obama's a lot less ew than old obama yeah but you know he was smoking that what did he call it chiba no what was this chum. Chum. he was chum. smoking his chum, chum with his he was smoking his chum with his buddies going someday i'll put all your kids in jail <laughs> for this <laughs> for this <laughs> yeah yeah i wonder though he's had to have smoked pot in the white house like i don't know I'm, man some people just when they get older don't like it I, i'm one of those people um, i used to smoke hella weed uh yeah. you know starting when i was 11 in 1975 and i smoked until uh probably till i discovered uh heroin you know mm. when i was about 22 and then i shot heroin for uh about eight years 
and then got clean and I haven't touched anything since then. I've actually, you know, I say I've been sober since 1994. I've smoked pot twice since 1994, you know, once about, oh, five years after that and once about five years ago. And both times I just, I didn't really like it. And I hadn't really liked it for a long time. It just, my body chemistry changed or something. And I was okay. just like, okay. you know, it's, it is euphoric to me. But I end up literally like walking from room to room in my house and then turning around and going like, what did I come in this room for? You know, <laughs> and I'm all about getting shit done and functioning and planning and working. And it doesn't. But, but what, it, what if you were in the White House and you had servants to do all that? Like, like, what if you had the White House kitchen at your disposal and you could sit, you know, in some White House theater and, and, and roll like a blunt out of like the finest Cuban I'd, cigar? No, man, I'd want to get up and like be doing stuff. You know, I don't <laughs> I don't need to have an agenda. To, I mean, like, I don't need to have orders from someone to do stuff. I find stuff to do. That's part of that's part of what gives me euphoria on a constant basis. I'm constantly stimulated, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, I do mm -hmm. drugs. I do nicotine and caffeine, like enough to kill an ox. But uh, that's part of my mm -hmm. process, man. <laughs> okay, okay. You know, I started vaping with the liquid. Oh, how's that? How's um, that? It's good. I'm not going to make any recommendations yet until I've tried a few different ones. But Nikki Darling uh, sent me some samples, and I ordered some blank cardamizers, which are about two fifty each, but they last a long time. And, uh, you know, mm -hmm. you just put the liquid in it and hook it onto the normal, you know, like the Vaporsmiths uh, batteries we had. And uh, I like it. Mm, okay. okay. I'm still smoking cigarettes, though, until I run out. And then I'm going to go to the – it's way cheaper, though, man. I mean, like buying the cartomizers, if we'd had to pay for them, would have been if they weren't our advertiser at the time, which they are not anymore. But, um, you know, uh, buying I, – I calculated it. Like the amount I was smoking would have been about two-thirds as much as I was spending on tobacco for the same amount of nicotine and buzz, uh, with refillable vapor stuff. I mean, it's like one third or one quarter as much as smoking cigarettes. Mm, okay. And nice. I spent about 500 nice. bucks a month on cigarettes. So that's going to save me enough money <laughs> to, uh, get this $6,000 job done in my backyard to get the, uh, the poo tube fixed. Uh, yeah. Cause poo our poo tube. tube's like 50 years old and it's made of tar paper and it, um, <laughs> has roots in it. Mm. Did you purr? Mm. Is that purring? Uh, yeah, it was supposed to be a disgusting sound, but I guess it came out it like a purr. Like <sighs> it happens. It happens. Ooh, poo <laughs> tubes leaking. <laughs> <laughs> you're kinky. Sexy. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. Your kink is not my kink. It's, it's uh, fine. Uh, uh, I don't think leaky poo tubes are really my kink. <laughs> uh, that was, that's a misunderstanding. What is your um, kink? The people yeah. want to know. I mean, look at our audience. They are they're nerds. They they know a lot about audio. They know a lot about uh, Linux. I mean, GNU slash Linux, GNU plus Linux. So um, yeah, you know, yeah. they probably want to know about your sex life. <laughs> really? Yeah, um, I think so. I well, want to know. About, I want to know about your sex life. Well, good for them. You know, <laughs> maybe no, one day. No I'm going to leave them effect, hanging. Man, I'm going to plug that other mic uh -huh. in so I could switch to it and go like, uh, you know, there's just none. It's just so consistent. I don't know, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I kind of feel like, um, you know, if you're single, uh, you could definitely talk about um, kink and your kink and your thing. But uh, I feel like when you're point, married, if you talk about it, you're you're implicating somebody else in the process yeah. who well, may not want that information to be public. If my wife were home, I'd have her sit down and do it. And she would be like, I don't want to do that. But it would have nothing to do with that it's about kink. She'd be like, I don't like getting on microphones. I like to go read books. You know, cause she and I used to do a kink cast where we actually had yeah, sex. Yeah, so yeah. she's not shy about that. She's less shy about it than I am. But, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, the, the usual time she'll jump on is if I'm like, if I'm interviewing somebody and they're misinformed about kink, or saying like, well, that's harmful to women. She'll jump on here and say, let me tell you why it's not, buddy. The way yeah, I do it. You yeah. know, it is if you, it's not if you're doing it right. <laughs> <laughs> Domination, you're doing it wrong. That's funny. Well, there is a thing in kink, um, a true dominant, and it's like mm -hmm. been corrupted to twoo. Like whenever someone declares themselves a true dominant, people make fun of them and call them a twoo, T-W-U-E, dominant. Twoo, dominant. <laughs> Because they're making fun of like, basically, it's. I think it's a thing of if you have to say it, it's not true. You know, it's like, uh, uh, mm -hmm. you know, like the 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 most badass gangsters don't say they're gangsters. They just are, and everyone yeah. knows it. You know, right, right. Except for rappers, they're all gangsters, and they say it. 
<laughs> your mom's <laughs> listening. Someone said, oh, mom, your mom's listening. Uh, that might be your mom, Nima. Uh, okay. What do you want me to do with that information? <laughs> <laughs> I just let let me, uh, she's, she's listening or she's in the chat room? She's in the chat room and she said, there's someone named mom says your mom. Oh, uh, um, yeah. Okay, prove your yeah. name is mom. Type no, the, uh, for the second. Just, no, they prove that. Type the letter of the second. Type the second letter of your first name. <laughs> Dude, I, uh, I, let's just take her out of her word. Okay. Regardless of what happens. Um, well, I'm not sure that was Smuggler. Yeah. That didn't sound like Smuggler, but it probably is Smuggler because I think Smuggler has that name registered in IRC, so no one else can use it. Hmm. We just make up different ones every time. I'm MD Fiend, MWD Fiend, Fiend dash MWD, whatever, you know. I I tried to register and it was really complicated. Uh, and, and I read all the instructions, like, you know, you type register slash whatever, and it gives you all the instructions, and like, none of it worked. It was weird. Mm, mm. Mm, okay okay your well, mom says mom says it's me yeah yeah the smuggler well, says a oh, everyone's kill. guessing everyone's <laughs> oh your mom it's your mom your mom got it right hey mom how you doing yeah, thanks for she, supporting she us. never says her name like you know when she calls in she won't say her name so yeah because uh, she thinks that the you know she's that so Cass proud is gonna <laughs> come through her window <laughs> Yeah. No, my mom's great. I love her. I love her. Oh, that squirrel just jumped so far, man. It was awesome up in the tree. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, hey, uh, um, let's ask your mom um, if she likes watching squirrels. She's about my age. And if Adam Curry's on here too, do you, he's exactly my age, like three months younger. Uh, okay. Anybody who's over 40, do you enjoy watching squirrels and birds in your yard? You there, Smuggler Nima? does not. Smuggler does not. Smuggler's uh, about 36, I think. I'm ah, guessing okay. from pictures. He hasn't yeah. reached the threshold. I know. The fiends, the fiends need, their, need own their own strain of weed. Yes, yeah. they do. Yes, they do. Um, and somebody else brought up a good point about the differences in the two types, the two main branches of weed, sativa and indica. And one is kind of a stimulant, um, makes you want to do things. So yeah, but maybe makes, that should be a fiend's week. I've had, it's I had both. My two, my two relapses, as we call them, um, as well, let's call them, one was on one and one was on the other. And it made me want to do <laughs> things, but wrong. I did them wrong. I couldn't, I couldn't deal with it. Mm, mm, okay okay um but yeah hey fiend weed um let's let's fiend source that and let the market take care of it uh so anybody out there i'd be who, honored uh, man if someone named a, a weed fiend, a strain of weed fiend, out, out of fiend weed. yeah yeah fiend weed. yeah yep. yeah <laughs> someone says, i'm not even 30 and i love to watch animals <laughs> if we had squirrels i'd watch them I like to watch them. I just don't like it enough to talk about it on a live radio show. Where does, where does someone live that they don't have <laughs> squirrels? I have found squirrels to be the most uh, – every state I've ever been in, and I've been in like 43 states in America, every one of them has squirrels, and everywhere I've been in Europe has squirrels. Are they, are they different colors? I wondered that. There are there's different some, brands there's some, of squirrels. But. Okay, because there's some kind of Geico commercial or something like that or some insurance commercial where he's like, you're a friendly gray squirrel thinking you to not run over me or something like that. And I was like, squirrels aren't gray. They're brown, but but uh, Rocky from Rocky and Bullwinkle, he was gray too. Is is, are, is there a gray squirrel out there somewhere? Is that a thing? This guy says he lives in the Netherlands. There's squirrels in Netherlands too, in Holland. Holland, maybe they call yeah. them something something different. <laughs> yes, <laughs> street and trees and rats and yeah, tree rat. Yeah. Well, hey. Um, we should take a little break, man. And we've been at right. this for like an cool. hour and 20 minutes or so. Yeah, and about an uh, hour and 10 minutes of it was you talking. So um, go ahead. Uh, I don't know That's about fine, that. That's fine, man. Wait, you were great. You were great. I'm what what do you want to listen to, though? Because uh, I was going to play I Loved You Then Then I Die. We played it on the last is, cast. We did. We did. But it's an awesome song. Um, it's an awesome song. But, but also, that, that recording is not very good. It's like an MP3 made from vinyl. And it, uh, before there was good MP3 encoding software. And it's the only thing I have of it. I don't have a um, turntable, okay. so I can't make one. So Okay. Uh, what about Personal Jesus, your cover oh, of the that's Depeche really good. Mode song? It's not very long, though. If you want to play that in one other song. It's five minutes and 58 oh, seconds, it? according okay. to iTunes. Yeah, this is my and- band, Bomb, recorded in Germany. Um we're doing this was a single that came out pressed a thousand copies of it it's really rare and expensive if you can find it bomb doing personal jesus by depeche mode and we did it before uh 
uh, Marilyn Manson did it. So yeah. I don't want to sound like a queer or nothing, but bomb covering Depeche Mode is really kick ass. Depeche Mode, um, some of their stuff is really, 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 really super gay, like more gay than a pile of men having anal sex. <laughs> some of their stuff is kind of heavy and hard. And like a pile of gay men having sex, like a pile of like really <laughs> heavy tough, and hard, tough ha, men, ha, ha. tough biker yeah. dudes having gay sex. Uh, you know, okay. it's like, okay. and the way we did it, we turned it into like you know, one man raping another man over the pool table music. Wow, yeah. So yeah, you know my mom's yeah. listening. <laughs> I play. I wanted to say, um, yeah, the title at least fits with the theme of my, uh, my be, wife be your own on. leader. Don't my submit. wife would get turned on by that image, but. Uh, Mm, okay well here you go uh bomb covering depeche mode personal jesus and my wife's like your other mom so so gun training with the non-aggression principle volume one basic handgun and rifle with jared waltz first rule of being alive is you own yourself a groundbreaking approach to firearms and self-defense training. Beautifully filmed and easy to understand instructions make this one a must-have. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. New DVD from Michael W. Dean. Available on Amazon. Did your world collapse when Ron Paul didn't win? Don't keep hoping for some great man to fix government through government. Complete your evolution today to full-on anarcho-capitalist. Reward your brain with the freedom fiends and quit breaking your heart with some politician. While the libertarians argue, But who would build the roads? The freedom fiends have already built the roads and moved on to making the great media content of the libertarian paradise. Freedomfiends.com That's freedomfiends.com Yeah, around.
touch face Nice uh, touch on the end there. That was not in the original. No. That was me. Made it sound real uh, clubby. Tape echo. Yep, that'll do it. Tape echo on a Newmark DXM 06. Which is the name of the button, but you don't know what tape echo is. You've never experienced it. Uh, Yeah, but you explained to me what it actually is. But hey, the button's awesome. I love that was one of the first things I did electronically was do tape echo when I was like 16 with a real to real tape recorder. Which, you know, I can't claim the crown anymore of Nima doesn't know that because I didn't know the reference to the uh, stoner. <laughs> I should. That's what yeah, I probably enjoy. Yeah. I like those comedians, all three of them. Half-baked. Yeah. yeah. It's really good. It's really good. You know, I love Chappelle. I love uh, John Stewart. And I love Puerto Rican guy. Well, Chappelle, or John Stewart, it's more of a cameo. He I mean, is so status these days man he's such an apologist the last few days yeah before yeah. and after the election it's horrible i, it's horrible. I can see that i can see that but but he he's doesn't have a big role at all in half baked it's like they sell weed to him once and he basically says his his whole bit is everything's better on weed um he's like have you ever looked at a 20 dollar bill have you ever looked at a 20 dollar bill on weed like it's so much better. That's pretty much his bit. He says that about like three things, and that's it. So, uh, but Chappelle's awesome in it. I, I'd say it's definitely Chappelle at his prime. You know what I just remembered is that we're a call-in show. I didn't have the call-in oh, computer yeah. even plugged in. I had it on, <laughs> but uh, it's plugged in now. If you want yeah, to call in yeah. here on I forgot about November, that too. November fifteenth, two thousand twelve. The number is uh three zero seven two one five five one seven one or Skype to username Kitty Feet One. Oh, this is cool. Somebody's making a t-shirt with the art files provided on the site. How can I make a shirt where the image won't wear off in chunks like la- chunks? Uh, you have silk, to silk screen. screen it. Yeah. Yeah. You silk screen it and then you have to uh, 
you let it dry and then you throw it into a dryer on low heat for about 20 minutes before you put it on. And then I think you're supposed to wash it before you wear it. Or actually, no, you wash it before you silk screen it and dry it. Uh, there's tons of directions on silk screening on the internet. And yeah. it's how you do it right. You know, when you order those, I mean, we do have t-shirts you can order from like Cafe Press, but they're done with these. They like, come off in chunks. They come off yeah, in chunks. Yeah. But um, yeah, silk screening, man, that's how real shirts are done anyway. You can actually do two color ones if you... I would do a one color one the first time, but uh, you could do two or three color ones. Yeah, it's more yeah. work, but yeah, that's how t-shirts just, were made um, forever. Right, right. Uh, that's how they're still made. Yeah, do one, do one color. Do it, do it like the button we have that just says gunsandweed.com in big letters. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I include that's that that's a really good icebreaker and conversation starter. Uh, that that button um, when Jillian was giving our buttons out at uh, at that event. What was it? Libertopia. And I Uh, had her send out, I had her send back the one she didn't give away. It was like all the guns and weed buttons were gone. And a lot of the other ones came back. (laughs) Yeah, Probably people that haven't even seen the movie. They're just like guns and weed. Cool. Awesome. It says guns and weed in big letters. And then it says dot com in tiny letters. And it's white, bold text on black background. And uh, people love that button. Yeah. Even people that don't have guns or weed probably like that button. True that, true that. Because they're two, they're two cool concepts, at least. At the very least. Yeah. I mean, if you have a movie with lots of weed and lots of guns in it, people are probably going to like it. Yeah, I'm going um, to link this, uh, the file he's talking about. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fiend source it, baby. Fiend source it. Yeah. Um, You know, I didn't even look at the notes today. <laughs> Did we have anything we were supposed to talk about other than Secession and Ron Paul? We had a lot of stuff, actually. Yeah. We could talk okay. about. Uh, okay. Well, read some of these. Uh, read the, on page two the origin of the SM57. Uh, it has four. a has an origin story. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I feel like we talked about uh, Mike's a lot, though. Just read it. Okay. Okay. Just read it, man. I, I'm mm-hmm. doing something else for the cast right now, so I need you to read to do something. Okay. Okay. Ah, yeah. So, okay. uh, let's see. Uh, all right. The origin of SM57 may be traced to 1937 when shore engineer Ben Bauer developed the first single element directional microphone, the Unidyne, which had a cardio pickup, cardioid. cardioid pickup pattern. In 1959, another Sure engineer, Ernie Seeler, advanced the art of microphone design significantly with the Unidyne 3. Seeler torture tested the Unidyne 3 during three years of research and development and thereby produced the SM series of rugged and reliable Sure microphone capsules. So I, I, I know that SM stands for studio microphone, but it could stand for sadomasochism if he tortured it to produce the SM. <laughs> he did. Torture tested, baby. The SM stands for studio microphone. Sealer was an aficionado of classical music and expected the SM57 to be used for orchestras. He despised rock music, but ironically, the microphone ended up being widely used during amplified concerts. <laughs> yeah. Um, most clubs I've been in, there's SM57s on the instrument, on the drums, and uh, and guitar amps, and bass amps, and there's an SM58 for the vocal. And they're basically almost the same mic. The only the real difference is uh, the capsule. On an SM57, it's kind of sharp and pointy, and it's not meant to be up against your mouth. And on the SM58, it's a ball. And the SM57 Beta A has a ball that's really hard and indestructible and it has an output transformer. So it's four decibels louder than the mm. SM 57. Mm. Mm. And it's what got is, that what is the element the on a dynamic mic? So I, I, after you my condenser it, mic, just unscrew it, do yeah. it while we're talking, let people hear it, leave the mic really? down, unscrew it, be careful, but unscrew that, it. And look that at won't it. sound awful to people. Sure. It will, but you know, <laughs> right. it's part of the, I mean, otherwise they're, you're just going to take your word for it. Okay. I'm unscrewing now. <laughs> screw there ah ah okay this is it naked the microphone's naked yeah it doesn't sound as good put it back on no i bet not you know with uh with my kink cast i put a mic that was plugged in um into a woman and it kind of sounded like slishy sounds Uh i I don't have that recording anymore that would be a uh you could recreate it bit torrent only probably you'd have to download like the 12 gig 
<laughs> archive of the whole thing zipped and then find the one in there where we did that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm screwing on air. You are. Like you used to do. You are. So now you All know. Right. I mean, you know, you took, your, you took your toys apart and didn't ruin them. So describe what yeah. you saw for the listening uh, audience. It was like a cylinder, but uh, oriented, um, you know, face on with the part of the microphone, unlike the condenser, which was kind of like perpendicular to the verticalness of the microphone. Um, and it wasn't like gold or anything like on a condenser mic. Um, and there were, I guess, six six holes around it. Um, and then two little speaker wire looking things coming out of it. Uh, but how does it? I guess, how does it work? Do you know? Yeah, it's um, it's the inverse of a speaker. And actually, a speaker will work as a microphone, not a very good one. And a microphone will work as a speaker. I, a I did one. that when I was a kid. I used to plug my headphones into mic inputs. Yeah. And you could talk through the headphone. You can blow it pretty easy. But, um, basically, it's a you know plastic diaphragm that moves with sound pressure uh, connected to a coil of light wires that goes to the transformer and then the output and in the middle of that there's a magnet mm. oh and in the uh beta the magnet is nobilinium uh alloy not just uh, iron like in an sm57 uh, so it's a stronger magnet okay but uh yeah so it's just basically a coil being moved by sound pressure over a magnet whereas with a condenser mic it's two very very thin pieces of uh conductive metal almost but touching each other but not acting as a condenser responding to a capacitor responding to uh, sound pressure. Mm. And on a ribbon mm. mic, it's a little ribbon, long rectangular of, of ribbon, thin metal, a very thin metal between two magnets and mm. the electricity okay. goes through the ribbon. Is there some kind of magical fourth dimension of microphone that I'm there aware are. of? There's, there's actually liquid microphones. The first microphone ever. L like in Death Clock when they record their album on water. <laughs> That's not so far from reality. I don't know that you could record <laughs> on water, but the first microphone that Alexander Graham Bell used for the first telephone was um, a glass of sulfuric acid with two wires in it. And the... Huh. Sound, pre which is not something you could have in every home for uh, <laughs> telephones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's you know the surface tension. Then, then the when you got mad at your wife and threw the phone at her, you, <laughs> you'd, you'd have a her for much life. bigger problem. That's horrible. <laughs> yeah, there's other kinds of mic. There's um, there's electrite microphones, which are permanently charged condenser microphones that don't need that don't need uh, phantom power. Phantom power. Those are used mm. in cell phones a lot. Um, there are. Boy, let's see. Uh, you can actually use a laser as a microphone. Laser membrane mic, okay, says beyond, Smuggler. Beyond that, I'm going to have Whoa. to go to Wikipedia. Carbon what is a laser? Okay, a carbon microphone is what you had in old telephones, uh -huh. old landlines, and it's basically yeah. um, a little round box of, you know, um, capsule carbon. of powdered carbon with two wires hmm. sticking in it, and it has a diaphragm on the top of the carbon, and sound pressure pushes on the carbon and changes the uh, capacitance. Or the, the, what do those sound like? Um, they sound pretty good. I actually have one of those phones sometimes, and I use it for interviews sometimes. When sound oh. They sound better than current landlines. All right. Uh, one microphone that you gave me a long time ago is a chunk of wood with what looks <sighs> like a little button on it. That has an electric uh, mic. An electric, electric mic. It's, it's okay. uh it, that is a live, I think it's called Live Oak is the company, and it was made for the river, the iRiver little recorder, which is something that um, podcasters used to use before iPhones that could record came out and Zoom H2s came out. And it was pretty much the way you could uh, do remote podcasting without bringing a bunch of equipment. And it's tiny. I mean, I gave you that too, didn't I, the iRiver? You did, and... I guess it was like cool back in the day, but it didn't play nice with Windows Seven. Like, it, well, you know, you should try to sell that on uh, on eBay and keep the money. Then uh, it's because those are so out of print that they're actually probably valuable now. Huh. Okay. Okay. Out of print. But yeah, it was it was also an MP3 player, and it didn't even have a gig of space. Like that's how old <laughs> it is. Uh, I, know. It, I think it's half a gig or something like that. You could put like three or four podcasts on it. Um, but uh, yeah, I actually never tried the mic with it though. I did. I did try plugging that mic into the MPC 
you know, using a quarter inch adapter because it wouldn't fit, you know, there's no eighth inch on an MPC and it didn't really work as a microphone for that. I don't know. Is there any, does it have to be powered? Does it have to plug into a specific device or can you just uh, not use the adapter with it? You mean for power? It takes one double A battery. No, not the, the MP3 player, the mic itself, the chunk of wood. I it plugged the chunk power. of wood. Uh, I don't think it needs power. Okay. I've plugged that into a laptop and used it as a mic. Really? Okay. Yep. okay. I'll try again. But uh, when I plugged it in, like I said, I had a quarter inch adapter on it. Does it not work if you do that? Because I probably probably not. Okay. Mm. Huh. You, you don't have a basement full of adapters for obsolete technology like I do. <sighs> I have a VHS player somewhere, man. I have a cassette do you, player. Do you? I don't have I don't have a turntable though. But you know, I can't even find this iRiver. River. What's the model number? Do you have it in front of you? Uh, no, that that is actually in the box of uh, outdated technology. I'll bet Adam I do Curry, have one. I'll bet Adam Curry had an iRiver, River, the red iRiver River recorder, because it was like, it was the sh- the Shisa back in the day, man. Shisa. Was, uh, ah, travel charger for iRiver River T10. That looks like it. iRiver River T10. Yeah, mm. still mm. selling a Chacha piece for it too. A what a, piece? A Chacha piece accessories. Ch- Chetch a piece. Yeah. I can't find hmm. it, man. It's, ah, okay. It's, uh, okay. Oh, put it on uh, eBay and see what you can get for it. Yeah. The uh, thing is, it's like, unlike most MP3 recorders that you plug in with USB and they open up another drive and you can just drag and drop from it, it had to have this like interface and it only worked up to it was XP. Awful. Yeah. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah. It was really awful. Yeah. It, it, it had its own little software thing. It came with a CD. Like, remember those days when you had to have an install CD? And it was, ugh, <laughs> yeah. Can't, can't believe how you old people did things. I know. Back in my day, we used to have to install our software off of discs, <laughs> plastic discs, I tell you. <laughs> ugh, ugh. You know, God getting into did. Linux kind of feels like that again because, like, sometimes installing stuff is uh, like, okay, let's see. What's the command prompt for this? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which, yeah. Although you, know, you really like uh, Ubuntu much better than I do. you like I do. Uh, but, you Mint. know, to be honest, at this point, I'm using Linux basically um, just to surf web, surf the web, do email, uh, you know, watch. I mean, you can't even watch. You can't even watch Netflix on uh, Linux because nobody will make a Silverlight clone for Linux that um, includes digital rights management, which you have to include to run. Uh, mm. You know, mm-hmm. so Netflix. So, and you were also saying that you, you you had problems getting your mixer. There was no driver. Yeah, there's uh, no driver. My use. mixer is not even a driver for Windows Seven. I have to use it on a Windows XP computer, but it's a great mixer. I don't want to replace it. I will eventually someday. It's a multi mix USB eight. It's called. It's the blue one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, and it's I've had it for like seven years, and it works really, really well. You could uh, pay one of your programmer friends to uh, write a driver for it. Yeah, maybe. But <laughs> you know, then I was thinking of other like what I wanted to do was okay. So I ran into the, <clears throat> I bought another gig of RAM for my XP computer, and then I ran into this thing that I didn't know about, which is that thirty-two bit Windows has a three gigabyte memory limit, and no matter how much memory you put in, only three of it will show up and be useful. Uh, uh. So. Um, you know, and I was how? Like, Why? Why would they do that? Is that planned obsolescence maybe. or or what? Because Bill Gates once said, "No computer will ever need more than 640k of RAM," and I guess he updated. Did that he? Did he gigs. really say that? I oh, kind of yeah. feel like that's oh, yeah. an idiotic thing to say. I mean, it's it's he's how, even how, joked how about be, it. He's joked about. How do you it be Bill he... Gates and not know Moore's law or or whatever? You know. I know. Well, probably because <sighs> he just rolled out a 640. K computer operating system at the time. Ah, uh, uh, so he he was in marketing mode, not actually talking the truth mode. Right, right. But uh, uh, okay. you know, thirty two. Okay, so there's two options for this computer if I want to um, use more memory. One is install sixty four bit Windows XP on it, which would cost money, and drag it to death slow wise. It wouldn't it wouldn't uh, work. It wouldn't help. Yeah. It'd hurt. Mm-hmm. And the other is to install Linux on it, where I could use my four gigs of RAM and it would friggin' scream. But there's no plug-in. Uh, there's, there's no drivers. There's no nothing you can type. Nothing. I've looked on all these boards for Linux music production. This particular unit does not work with Linux. Will not work. You put it in, it recognizes it. I mean, you can type in in the terminal, you know, the whatever the command is. I don't even have it memorized yet, you know, to show what what hardware is in. And uh, it shows mm-hmm. it, but it doesn't, you can't access it. You can't record anything. You can't talk. So um, yeah, I'm just going to yeah. keep my XP computer until it dies and then probably buy 
either another XP computer or another mixer, whatever's cheaper. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, I guess I guess the lesson is you got to look up forums about the gear you have, but try to find the problems like like type in all the different gear you're using together cuz sometimes gear doesn't play nicely with it other gear you have. Uh when I bar- bought my Newmark NS7, it works fine, um but I do get a little error message whenever I plug in the the DJ controller, the Newmark NS7 to the computer, and I I learned that it's because uh for my audio interface uh, when I'm not, when I don't have that plugged in, like when I'm podcasting right now, I use an M audio, uh, audio interface and it, it is actually a competing company or a company that has an interest in a competing DJ software tractor. Uh, so they don't play nice together and they're, they're both fighting over the computers, uh, programming that controls MIDI. And, uh, so I, I couldn't have them both plugged in at the same time and have it work. Um, which I had kind of wanted to do, but now I can't do it. And I, I, looked up forums after the fact and seen people complaining about this and both companies say well uninstall the driver of your other gear and it'll work fine uh but nothing to the effect of hey let's get this to work together guys so yeah um google that kind of stuff before you buy things and and use it to inform your decision buy tings are you watching squirrels again no i'm uh typing on the chat room someone says i've got it wrong uh 32 bit can use can use more than three gigs of ram but not more than three gigs of ram per process i think it's actually two gigs of ram per process but um let's see so if i right clicking on properties of the xp 32 bit says three gig of ram even with four gig of good ram in the computer so Mm. i'll try it again right now let's see what it says Okay. Okay. Um, are you going to try that again right now? We've also got another two point ninety nine uh, gigabytes of RAM, and there are four gigs of RAM in there. Uh, uh. Hmm. So well, uh, uh, maybe you could send it to Void Zero and say, "Hey, get it to work. <laughs> Mail it to him if he knows a way." Uh, Lefo also asks, and this would be important for people to know. He asks if there is a hundred dollar setup with the seventeen dollar mic. That would be good for most noobs. I'm assuming what he's asking is, uh, can he record if he just has $100 in his wallet? Uh, for what? Sp- I use it for recording, for live podcasting, for streaming. Um, I, I guess I guess he uh, – I would I would say he probably means podcasting, but I'm not sure. I asked him. Let's uh, see what he says. Uh, okay, okay. But, we're, like uh, a, yeah. we're like a romance advice show, but it's for everything <laughs> for, but for romance. Gear. For gear. Yeah. Um, I would say the most important thing for recording is you get some kind of audio interface, though. Yeah, um, and with a, a mixer a, that plugs in with a USB or a, a M-Box or an M-Audio Fast well, Track Pro, yeah, which is what I you, have. If you just plug a mic using an adapter into the eighth-inch ends it's on not a computer, gonna sound it's going to sound like ass. And yeah. really, for any mic to sound good, you're going to need some, an interface that has a preamp. What is your uh, interface? My mine was like two hundred and seventy five bucks a few years ago. I'm sure that there's um, a comparable mm-hmm. one that's come down mm-hmm. that works with X, you know, sixty four bit. But I don't know what it is yet. So uh, see, what do you? Mine using? is the M Audio Fast Track Pro. How much was it's it? It's actually, uh, I think it was. I want to say two hundred, but maybe it was a hundred. Maybe it's a hundred now. Let me uh, go ahead and Amazon it. M Audio Fast. I think Track. I could beat you to it because I've, I've got uh, it on a thread. Yeah, 100 bucks, um for some of them. It looks like there's a cheap... No, the Fast Track Pro is still 200 but uh, it looks like there's lower models. There's used models. Um, cheapest price I see, M-Audio Fast Track. I see $259 for yours. Uh, one, four used from 150 Well, there's the M-Audio Fast Track MK2, which is similar but doesn't look like it's as doesn't have as many inputs um and that's 119 dollars um hmm i would say oh here you go lexicon alpha usb desktop recording studio 59 dollars on musician's friend which is the online storefront of uh, guitar center because i was going to say hey just go to guitar center uh although it doesn't look like it has an xlr i'll sell you to hell man they will as long as you stand firm, you don't have to let them upsell you. Um, and depending on your the salesman you get, I mean, 
every time I've gone in, you know, I, I tell them how much I'm looking to spend, or I say, "Hey, I'm just trying to learn about this stuff right now," and uh, you know, sometimes they're they're just informative. Sometimes they don't know what they're talking about, and they're like, "Oh, well, the guy that knows about that isn't here today," but uh, <laughs> you know, it's uh, at least you get to go look at the gear and see it. And generally, at Guitar Center, they'll let you you know hold it in your hands, test it out. Um, Oh, here, here you go. M. This is an M audio. This is audio box USB from PreSonus for 149. So I'm looking at this uh, fast track US 44010 USB audio interface with GT Player Express software. Is that what you're talking about for 46.99? Um, I don't see that it has. Uh, I, I don't see that it has XLR, and yeah. I don't see that it has. Um, that it has a preamp it's i think it's just to plug a quarter inch in and have a usb out and have some volume knobs um mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah this is probably something we should research more and uh get back to you on and not try to do in the last eight minutes here but <sighs> yeah because you know, otherwise yeah. we're going to give you something that's not right <clears throat> uh yeah so yeah there might be a way to do actually it for you know this tube mp preamp i'm using uh was under a hundred I put a better tube in it, but it pretty much does everything he wants to do. And it well, you said the prop. The reason you don't use it anymore is you can't monitor the sound. I'm using it as right you're now. recording it. I'm using it right now, but I'm using okay. it into okay. my uh, mixer. Okay, so you're but, using uh, it just as a tube preamp right now. Yeah, but I think not, it was not I was as using audio it with interface. XP that I couldn't monitor. I think that you should be able oh. to. Let me post a link for that, and people can read it and see what they think. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and that's that's what Frank got too. And you say that that tube, what, what's it called? It's called like Pro Audio Tube or something. One like that. XL. It's the most common tube there is. I can't remember what it is offhand, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what my little brother bought. Um, so yeah, I guess you could do that. Uh, just research it. But basically, you need that. That's the most important piece. Is not necessarily the microphone, but it's your audio interface into your computer. So find a cheap one of those that works. Make sure it has XLR inputs, uh, a preamp. Uh, make sure it has phantom power if you're going to use a condenser mic. But as we said earlier, you don't necessarily need a condenser mic. Um, and then, you know, plug the the $16 microphone in it and you're ready to go. You can get on the mumbles, uh, you know, down your, download yourself a, a DAW, a DAW, digital audio workstation like Cubase, and you can record stuff uh, for future reference. Okay, I'm posting um, um, but yeah. a link here to a YouTube video I did that has in the info has a link to this on Amazon. This is what I'm using for my preamp, and I was using it for the last few casts with that $17 mic. Uh, did I post the $17 mic? That's a question, though. I don't have it on this YouTube video, so let me post that, too. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Which uh, it sounds great for a seventeen dollar mic. It's not doesn't make you feel good when you get it, and it looks like you know something little kids use for and it karaoke. Says star power on it. Star power. It says star power on it. Yeah, it's kind of cheesy. It's what but, you're uh, using right now, though. It is. Yeah, it, it it's sounds the, fine. The natty. What is it? Nate natty. I call it. Maybe it's natty. I don't know. But it's the when, natty. when I think of natty, I think of natty light, and I get kind of nauseous. Here, so I'll I call it the link. natty. I'll post a link to this too. Man, I'm gonna it's have to the, post all these links in the uh, show the, notes too. The, the SP-4C is what it is. Yes. And uh, but yeah, it's it's a great mic for sixteen ninety nine. I think it is on Amazon. So let's go back to uh, like gun nuttery. <laughs> Someone posted we, on the forum. We got five like, minutes left. If anyone wearing a UN uniform confronts you on your own property or at your home, consider it an armed invasion by foreigners and respond accordingly. <laughs> I didn't say it. I'm reading off the internet. Man, I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, hmm. I thought of another thing too. You know the um, the tax on collectible cars in uh, Wyoming. It's a collectible tax car. They can collect tax on it. Mm. That's not as clever as I thought. Out of context, I don't know. <laughs> well, are you talking about the what the county calls junk cars, where they wanted to charge yeah. people for having old cars in their on yeah. their property? Yeah, yeah. So when dealing with statists, I just walk away if they uber defend the state. If it's clear they're not going to get it, 
They are a different species from you, Homo parasitis, <laughs> and you should block them on the internet and in life. If I think it's clear within a few seconds of talking to status whether they're, you know, if the seed could lie dormant and then grow, or if they plan to spray it with Monsanto logic be gone as soon as you walk away. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think there's always been, or for a long time, there's been this conflict between, as Heinlein said it, you know, uh, those who want to control others and those who have no inclination to do so. Uh, on Lou Rockwell, they posted an old article by Murray Rothbard, which uh, was interesting to me. It was actually about um, what he calls the first philosophical anarchist to really put it into words was a student of Lao Tzu. And Lao Tzu, you know, who invented Taoism, which looks like Taoism, but I think it's pronounced Taoism, yeah. uh, was actually anti-state. And he was sort of a reactionary and, and anti-Confucian because Confucian was kind of like, uh, yeah, you must have the state kind of a thing. And uh, his student actually... And, and that's think about how like our society, you know, folkloridly give so much like weight to confucianism like confucius say like he's a wise man <laughs> as a joke confucius yeah, yeah, stay, yeah. say the state is up your butt is a good thing yeah 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 um but oh i forget his name now but the student of lao Tzu actually took it a step further and said a lot of things that uh you know i guess western society came up with with independently as sort of freedom but he basically said you know spontaneous order he had a thing about you know you leave society alone you don't let the government interfere with it and you'll have a good order uh but the more you try to regulate things the more you'll have thieves and robbers in your society is basically what he said uh somebody said that um he can't remember if it was the freedom fiends or bad quaker who first put the worm in his brain <laughs> Yes. Well, either way, doesn't Jason matter. Jason Hayes is now seeding there. We didn't get many donations this week, but Jason Hayes is now seeding our torrents, which is better than donations. Good. And uh, if you are seeding and you want to be mentioned on the air, let us know. Same with donations. A lot of people don't want to be mentioned as donating to the fiends because they think they're going to be arrested for giving <sighs> aid and comfort to the enemy or something and droned. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, Werewolf Bar Mitzvah isn't actually Tracy Jordan saying yeah, lines. You yeah. No, you Who didn't tell. It? You put it in the notes, but uh, who is it? It says I can't, I'm not on that page. Donald Glover, yeah. who's in, uh, he was awesome. He's in. Um, I think he's been a writer for Saturday Night Live. He's probably most famous for his role in uh, Community, where he's hilarious. Uh, I think he plays a guy named Troy, and him and Abed are like the the best comedic duo I've seen in a while. Uh, and he also he's also a rapper. Uh, check out Childish Gambino. It, it's pretty good. It's good technically. He's a good rapper. Um, I mean, he kind of plays the poor me uh, card a little un more unbelievable than than I really think. I mean, he's a famous TV writer, but uh, but it, it, technically it's All good right. stuff. It's fun to it's listen to. It's time for the outro. And remember, school is where fools get turned into tools. <laughs> exactly. Here's the outro. We're not saying the freedom fiends are the one true path to anarchist liberation, but it's a good one. If you want to put your voluntarist money where your mouth is, consider making a donation to the Freedom Fiends. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the spinning coin on any post. Then make a one-time gift via PayPal or set up a monthly contribution of as little as $3. Giving to the Freedom Fiends helps advance education of horizontal liberation throughout the world. The Freedom Fiends. We work hard, so send us some money. Thank you for listening to the Freedom Fiends Agenda. We'll be back streaming live every Thursday from 3.30 to 5.30 p.m. East Coast U.S. time on Adam Curry's No Agenda Global Radio. MP3 archives of all Freedom Fiends episodes are available free at freedomfiends.com. That's F-R-E-E-D-O-M-F-E-E-N-S dot com. Wow. All right, Nima, I've stopped butt casting. Are you there? Hello, hello. 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 Yeah, I'm here. You still yeah. mumble recording too? No. Oh, yeah. Huh. Let me stop that. All right. All right. Stop Fiends. That. Stop Worms. that. Stop that. Worms. Worms. Peace.
Love the fiends and want to help out? We do take donations and we put them back into our Liberty Projects. You can make a donation by clicking on the spinning coin on any post. But what if you want to help, but you ain't got no cash? Or you made a donation and you want to help more? Here's how you can help. Download and seed our torrents to help keep us drone-proof. There's a Torrent Club link at the top of FreedomFiends.com. You can also blog the fiends and share episode links on Facebook, Twitter, and elsewhere. You can rate and review our movies on Amazon. Amazon and IMDb, you can rate and review the Freedom Fiends and Anarchy Gumbo and our songs on iTunes. That really helps a lot. You can buy our movies and share them with friends or give them out as gifts. And one of the best ways to spread liberty is to buy a bunch of Freedom Fiends buttons and give them out as gifts. Wholesale prices are available and you can also comment on our site or better yet, comment about us on other sites. And please email the site link to all your friends. Thanks for helping spread the Fiends message worldwide to as many Liberty people as you can, especially to those who don't yet get it. You rock.